kind of right, but kind of not. South yeah. Philly, South Jersey, yeah, yeah. South Camden, <laughs> yeah. South Paul. Huh? I don't I don't know what you're talking about. Paul's another name for hair. Why don't you just <laughs> In case she didn't know. In case she didn't know. I'm just a lovable dumb di- dumb giant. I have turtles. I, I have paws. I got my mitts on you. You like animals, right? Well, hello there, and welcome to a brand new episode of the Confused Breakfast Podcast. Do you remember mm. the pure joy of a trip to the video rental store as a kid? I do. The excitement of walking down the aisles, browsing the names of the artwork, and finally picking out the movie you were going to take home with you. Yeah. Sure, it's hard to beat the ease <laughs> of the modern era and streaming platforms where you don't even have to leave your house. But there was something truly special about jogging to Blockbuster while weirdly punching the air at odd times, picking out a movie, and watching it when you got home. On this podcast, we revisit and dissect some of our favorite childhood movies from that magical era to see if they still move us the way they did as kids. I'm your host, Mike Schulte. Joining me as always, in this corner, wearing bird dogs and sipping Cedar Ridge whiskey, two dudes weighing in a combined 397 pounds, the heavyweight podcast co-host champions of the world, Sean Trenchcoat Tarantino Pryor. And AJ, man of many voices, Vens, are you ready to rumble? <laughs> How the heck are you? Wow, I'm a little lightheaded. That was great, man. Wow. I had to hold my nose so it sounded like I was talking through a system. Oh. I pictured a mic being <laughs> dropped down I know. for you. That a was mic nice. being dropped I'm to Mike. Yeah. I'm slightly lightheaded after that. Thanks. Yeah. Good. So you guys doing well? That was I'm worth it? I'm good. Yeah, on a, other than Paul Rubin's passing. Mm-hmm. So I'm doing solid gold, Sorry to bring baby. it up. Uh, Right on the tip of the show, but the Paul t- Rubens, t- R.I.P. The tip of the show. Yeah. Why'd you have to do that? Why are you bringing us down? Because we just heard about it. Well, Paul Rubens. I understand. R.I.P. And we'll get there, but this is a time for Burgess Meredith. All right. Yes. Time well, for winners. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, boys, on today's episode, we discuss the highest grossing movie of 1976, a movie that spawned five sequels and a three-film spinoff series Number 214 on IMDb top rated movies of all time. A movie that must be celebrated as a Christmas movie if you also celebrate Die Hard as a Christmas movie. If you don't, you're a fucking hypocrite. <laughs> We're, of course, talking about 1976's Rocky. Salty. <laughs> well, damn, dang it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for another nostalgic journey to the past with the confused breakfast. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. Wherever you are in the world. Take it away, boys. Well, you might be saying, 1976, what's going on on here? You've officially entered for the second time. We did it last year. We're doing it again. It is the summer of 70s, and it feels right. August feels like a good time to do it. It's the dog days of summer, and we are in. We're full speed in on summer of 70s, so you're going to enjoy this the whole month of August. And if you Best decade in cinematic history. I'm Mm. I'm telling you. That's what he said. I'm telling you right now. As evidenced by the lineup of movies we have coming. Indeed. But if you're new to this podcast, we're going to be reviewing Rocky scene by scene with a modern eye. But in order to do that properly, we got to discuss it with pure nostalgia. This was AJ's choice for summer of 70s. Tell us why you liked it first time you saw it, what your rating was when you saw it as a kid. Rocky was a like uh, w- another one of those movies that I never knew which Rocky was on. I just knew it was Rocky. And I'd see it on TV. Uh, never saw this on VHS or anything until I think somebody ended up having like this box collection, right? And that's when I was finally able to decipher what movie was what. Um, Rocky one was not the first one that I saw, but I knew what Rocky was. And going back, um, I loved Rocky. That being said, when I finally saw Rocky 1, I was like, "Uh, this is like kind (laughs) of like, why is it all like grainy and like, (laughs) it seems like it's, it's like weird. It's like blurry or something. And so I didn't like it as much as the other Rocky movies. So that being said, um, 
I kept expecting it to be something else. The other Rocky movies, mostly Rocky three, uh, in my childhood. And, but since it wasn't that, I think I'm going to have to go ahead and give this probably nostalgically, uh, a 5.9. 5.9. Sean, what about you, man? Yeah. I kind of only remember seeing the ending of this movie. Uh, cause I, I remember a vivid memory of my mom, watching this and that's the only like i knew i was watching the whole thing but like as a kid i'm like this is all like just talking and whatever (laughs) there's no fighting yet and then once it gets to the fight that's where my memory begins you know Mm -hmm. um and like yeah she showed me that scene and was like oh look how beautiful this romance is and that's where i'm like oh i I like romantic comedies now (laughs) um but yeah back then i thought it was super boring and uh didn't ever really want to watch it unless it was like on tv Mm. so i'm gonna give this a 3.5 3.5 i i do think maybe that i kind of sort of have memories of this movie but i also don't think i do Uh because like Remember, I was born in 82, so by the time like I'm being allowed to watch these movies is Rocky IV for yeah. me. Yeah. Rocky IV was it. And I even watched Rocky V. I was like, yeah, it's cool, Rocky V. And most people don't like that one. But I just never went back because I think someone told me, like, oh, the first one's like, that's just boring. There's no but we we want the over-the-top Rocky IV stuff, is what I want in my head, right? So I'm going to probably give myself an N.A. I really, truly do not feel comfortable saying that I've seen this movie. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to be an N.A., and we do have an executive producer on the show today. We got a David Gould. A David Gould. A David Gould. He says, sometimes you seek out a classic movie based on reviews or word of mouth. Sometimes you happen across a classic movie flipping through the channels. Sometimes you miss a classic altogether. But in the case of Rocky, I was told I would be watching this film. Pastor Jim, a good friend, mentor, and proud Philadelphia boy, sat me down one Monday night in the summer and said, tonight we are watching Rocky, and tomorrow Rocky too, and so on until we are through with the series. As I took in the pure nostalgia, I couldn't help but to let my mind wander to all the places I'd seen this movie parodied before. Even back then, I could feel the importance of this film and the ripples it created in pop culture, even though I found the movie boring Mm. the pace was slow the story felt a bit too adult for me and admittedly i had a chip on my shoulder when spoilers he lost Mm. although part of me didn't get it there was a part of me that appreciated this film so my nostalgic rating is going to be a 6.35 so fellas we're pretty low we're a (laughs) 5.25 on the nostalgia meter which actually that's bottom bottom 10 Wow. wow that is tied with grumpy old men slightly worse than tremors slightly better than bad boys is how we feel about this movie <laughs> okay. that's how we feel about it that's fair but we're gonna throw that out the window <laughs> now that we've talked about it we don't care about that anymore we're gonna now just dis- digest this dissect it with a modern eye and we're gonna start with Sean he's gonna give us all the pertinent important details in the movie Sean what do you got man? here it is produced by Erwin Winkler and Robert Car- Chartoff. Mm. Written by Sylvester Stallone. Cinematography by James Crabe. Also did The Karate Kid. Kind of fun. Yeah. Edited by Scott Conrad and Richard Halsey. Music by Bill Conti. Directed by John G. Albertson. Cast Sylvester Stallone, Talia Shire, Carl Weathers, Burgess Meredith, Burt Young, Thayer David, <laughs> Joe Spinell, Buckus Stallone. Had to get him in there. Yeah. Joe Frazier and Tony Burton. In 1975, Sylvester Stallone was sort of a nobody being featured in the film The Lords of Flatbush. It was his only really known credit at the time. Stallone had always wanted to tell a true underdog story, and while looking for inspiration for that story, Stallone watched the fight between Muhammad Ali and Chuck Wepner. Wepner was really a nobody in the boxing realm, <clears throat> excuse me, and was projected to get his ass handed to him by Ali. But Wepner would go the distance, and Ali even with Ali, and even knock him down with a devastating blow to the ribs. After witnessing this, Stallone had his inspiration for the film. Mm. Stallone would complete the script for Rocky in three and a half days. Written on a spiral notebook, co-star of Lord of Flatbush and friend Henry Winkler read uh, Stallone's script and thought he could help with it. He brought the script to ABC, who actually bought it, but wanted to hire a new writer. Stallone begged Winkler to try and get the script back, which he eventually did. Stallone even brought the script to Erwin Winkler. Stallone then brought the script to Erwin Winkler and Robert Chartoff, mm. who were working with United Artists. The duo lived... Loved the script and bought it from Stallone all at the same time saying uh, to Stallone, we could totally get Robert Redford or uh, Ryan O'Neill, Burt Reynolds, or even fucking James Caan, man. This is great. We could get all those people in there. They'd be great in this role. 
And uh, Stallone could not budge on that. He he really wanted to be the lead role in this as well as be the writer and uh, was really he- not going to sell it to anybody unless that was going to be the case. That's a bold move if you think yeah. about it because yeah. someone could have easily just been like, nope, and that movie could have gone forever, right? Yeah, yeah well, yeah, like a- everybody could have just said no. I yeah. mean, somebody could have just been like, you're a nobody. Like so Someone's going to say yes. Yeah. Needing an adversary for the picture, Stallone originally wanted an actual boxer. He had considered Ken Norton and even Joe Frazier, even getting in the ring with Frazier only to have his ass handed to him, <laughs> knowing he would not be able to control that on a set. Former football player Carl Weathers was brought in to audition alongside Stallone. As Weathers was reading, he said to the producers, you know, if you got me a better actor to work with, <laughs> I might. Uh, this might be, go a little bit better. The producers then informed him that the person he was reading off of was not only the writer, but the man who would play the title role himself. Yeah. <laughs> Stallone liked his arrogance and cockiness so much he had to have That's him in great. the film. Carrie Snodgrass and Susan Sarandon were up for the role of Adrian. But at the last minute, Talia Shire made it made it known she was perfect for the role. Mm. They actually said Susan Sarandon was too pretty <laughs> to play this role. Really? Principal photography began on January 9th, 1976 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And on its extremely low budget, Stallone would have friends and even family play a lot of the side characters in the film. Most of the wardrobe was owned by the cast themselves. The production was also very much a guerrilla tactic style of filming. Production manager Lloyd Kaufman, proprietor of Troma Films himself, would alert and uh, weave his way through production teamsters for the crew to film on location in Philadelphia. The production only had about 25 days to complete principal photography. Stallone remarked that one day the crew got 60 setups done in one day. Wow. Having to save time, Steadicam inventor and operator Garrett Brown would be a savior and innovator for the film, being the first film to employ the Steadicam prominently. There was two films before this that it was done in, is but he uh, like brought it to this major studio for this project itself. Is that still is that the same guy from Halloween? The um, opening shot of Halloween, or is, is that different? The Shining. The Shining. Okay. Shining. Yeah. Um. I'm I'm not sure if there was if he was on the set for Halloween. Okay. We'll gotcha. Find that out. Yeah. Maybe we'll find that out. Halloween. Maybe. Who knows? Uh. But yeah, I, I think know. in The Shining that we said that that was the first use of Steadicam, so this was actually technically it. The film was released on December 3rd, 1976, and on a budget of 960000 the film would go on to make $225 million at the box <laughs> office, be nominated for 10 Oscars, winning three, including Best Editing, Best Directing, and Best Picture, and would spawn a franchise, including subset franchise with Creed. Yeah, that's, that's about it. That's all I got. Well, before we move on, we got to talk about some like, very special group of people, our Patreon members. In case you haven't noticed yet, we're moving into August. We have officially said we're going two episodes a week. We've officially done it. We're moving forward. And that is all due to those amazing people in our Patreon. If you want to join, you're going to get a bunch of extra perks there. You're going to get to vote on upcoming movies. You're going to get to hear our bonus audio episode after this, which we're probably going to talk about the rest of the Rocky series, I'm assuming. So you get to hear all that. Private Discord server, tons of stuff. Give your modern-day ratings on this movie all at patreon.com slash confusedbreakfast. Up next, we talk to AJ. He does the research for us, gives us the ratings of fans and critics. Like, what do you got? Hey, hey, yo, what do you got in your face? A big old tomato? It's the tomato tomato meter! Gross! Cut it. Hey, yo. uh, Cut it. Cut that tomato. Cut me. Cut me, me, tomato. Rocky comes in at a 92% on the tomato meter. That is certified fresh. Goodness. My friends, here are the movies that we have done that that is tied with. Days and Confused, Jurassic Park, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Good company. Slap. Per the critics, those Slap. are the same movie. They're the same. <laughs> they're the same movie. Yep. The most base level thing. They're the same. They movie. are the same. Audiences come in a little lower. Sixty nine percent. It's a lot lower. <laughs> Sixty nine. Nice. It's always fun. Yeah, you know, come mention. on. Just, just give it. Give it the option. Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, eight point one on IMDb. Which, as we know, you get into the eights on IMDb. <laughs> that is a masterpiece. It is tied with. Stand by me, Big Lebowski, Jaws, Argo. Yeah, masterpieces. Mm. Masterpieces. Masterpieces. Yeah. masterpieces. Put Rocky right up next yep. to it. Yeah. Is there no? Uh, guys, we got some critic reviews here. Let's start at the bottom, work our way to the top, just like Rocky did. Nice. Uh, the New York Times, Vincent Canby, had this to say. Uh, targeting Stallone, he said, The problem, I think, comes down to Mr. Stallone. Throughout the movie, we're asked to believe that his Rocky is compassionate, 
interesting, even heroic, though the character we see is simply an unconvincing actor imitating a lug. So, can be? What's Vic his name? Vincent Canby. More like Vincent can't, you can't be serious. <laughs> More like Vincent can't be uh, given a good synopsis. Stupid head. <laughs> name, uh, dumb boy. name and stuff. <laughs> Well, we'll move this along. Okay, sixty out of hundred. Dave Carrot Reader had he simply said, "I wanted, I wanted to like it more than I did, but it'll do. <laughs> it'll do. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm okay that it's a movie. Well, well. Yeah. Um, I, I'll finish up our critics with uh, the one, the only, Mr. Raj Eeb. Well, cool. uh, he did, in fact, think this was phenomenal. Hundred out of a hundred, four out of four. Tell whatever you want. Two thumbs up." Um, I'll give you some excerpts from his full review here. Uh, it starts out simply, she sh she, <laughs> well, shoop. she sits tearful and crumpled in the corner of her little bedroom. Her brother has torn apart the living room with a baseball bat. Rocky, the guy she has fallen in love with, comes into the room. Do you want a roommate? She asks shyly, almost whispering. Absolutely, says Rocky which is exactly what he should say and how he should say it, and why Rocky is such an immensely involving movie. It's a story about a punk club fighter from the back streets of Philly who gets a crack at the world championship has been told a hundred times before. A description of it would sound like a cliche from beginning to end, but Rocky isn't about a story. It's about a hero, and it's in in inhabited with supreme confidence by a star. It's, it's a legend, it's about the little people. It's bigger, it's, but it's bigger than life. And you have to set them apart visually so you can isolate them morally. There's all of that, and then there's the fight at the end of the film. By now, everyone knows who wins. But the scenes before the fight set us up for it so completely, so emotionally, that when it's over, we've all had it, and we're drained. Nice. That's Beautiful Roger work. Here. Yeah. I'd expect nothing less right. than Mr. from Mr. Rajiv. Yeah. Uh, let's get a couple. I just got two two fan reviews here. All right, let's go here. This is a first one. This is a four out of ten. Says it's good to watch. Um, Rise to glory in uh, sep on September twenty fifth of two thousand one. Um, oh. This movie said said this. He said this movie is worth a viewing every now and again. But I must say it is quite boring in parts. Who cares about your love life? All I care about is the fight. More fight, less romancing. Let's go, Rocky. Don't bore us with your love life. We just don't care. <laughs> okay. Grade four. I give it a grade four. Give it a grade four, guys. How about this? 10 out of 10. If you guys wrote this, if somebody out there wrote this specifically for the podcast, congratulations, you got it on. <laughs> oh. um, this is a 10 out of 10 entitled, He Doesn't Even Win. Said B hole she bang <laughs> on July twenty eighth of twenty twenty three. Wait, what? B hole she bang. B hole she bang. B hole she bang. I think it means butthole girl gang bang. Oh no! Can I say that? Yeah, you did. Uh, you took it there. I I was just reading the name, so it's fine. <laughs> Great warning. Spoilers. Mike just gave us spoilers. Uh, <laughs> all right, so. A mentally underdeveloped fighter, lone shark enforcer, falls in love. The object of his affection? A shy, unconfident, mousy girl who is obviously attractive. But, you know, glasses and horrible clothing. <laughs> <laughs> Cliché. Rocky tries but fails to make headway with the lovely Adrian through the use of jokes. He then turns to her abusive, alcoholic brother uh, that he is also kind of friends with, Polly. <laughs> He berates her and kicks her out of the house to give Rocky a try. <laughs> he eventually manages to win her over, and she gains the confidence to stand up to Polly and ditches the glasses and secondhand rags. <laughs> Finally, we can see that she is pretty, and they are in love. Oh, there's also boxing. <laughs> the heavyweight champion of the world, Chubbs Peterson, gives Rocky a shot at the title. <laughs> Veteran boxing trainer Mickey, who wanted nothing to do with Rocky, suddenly takes an interest, but Rocky doesn't want him, want him because he was rejected before. So anyway, Mickey is training him in the next scene <laughs> by spouting out some platitudes or something. 
<laughs> we finally get to the actual boxing, and Rocky is able to go the distance with Chubbs. He loses the title by split decision, but is a champion in life because he wins our hearts. I think this movie won some awards or something. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> Was that a shrug emoji at the end? I like, wish it was. Uh, I so think it's really like, like a <laughs> rags to riches story for Adrian. Too. For Adrian. It really is, if you think you know, about it. It kind of she is. met Rocky, and she's a better person because of it. <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah. Everyone is. Yeah. Let's be real. Uh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, AJ. My dudes, before we get started on a scene-by-scene review of this movie, That's me. I got to give some advice to all of our listeners, to our audience. I want to say, stay in school and use your brain. Yeah. Be a doctor. Be a lawyer. Carry a leather briefcase. Forget about podcasting as a profession. Podcasting makes you grunt and smell. Yeah. See, be a thinker, not a stinker. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> so scene one, boxer Rocky Balboa is fighting Spider Rico in a prize fight at a local church arena. Rocky defeats him and is paid a measly wager for the fight. The next morning, Rocky visits the local pet shop where Adrian Panino works, Rocky's shy and quiet love interest. Rocky walks down to the docks to find a man who owes Gazzo some money. He roughs him up and gives the money to Gazzo. Later that day, Rocky goes to Mixie's, Mixie's Boxing Gyms, only to find out that his locker has been rented out to another boxer. All right, is there a more iconic score to a sports movie ever? I don't think so. Try and name one. Try and think of one. <sighs> I think this is it. I think, I mean, it's maybe the most, one of the most iconic scores of all time, in my opinion. Like, one of, like, it's not even that much music either. It's just like this song and like the ending song. Well, too. it's weird too, because they, they open up with it. Yeah. And then I don't know, do we ever get it again? We get it like sometimes in the, like the training do. montage. Yeah. And that's like sort of, right? Yeah. But it's like, they're like, here's, it's, it's actually brilliant. They're like, yes. Dun, 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 dun. And then it's like, <laughs> Oh, like this guy actually here's a sucks. really sad piece of <laughs> shit. Oh, <yeah. laughs> like, <laughs> he is a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> like everybody's yelling, and he won the fight, and somebody's like, "You're a bum." I know. You're like he won the fight. He's like, "Hey, can I get one of those cigarettes?" He's like, "You can have the one I'm already sucking on." <laughs> it's like, dang, dude. Second, literally secondhand cigarette. Like quite literally secondhand smoking. <laughs> and you know, this is this is. I think it even attests to it in the the thing I wrote or, or read there. But like, this is definitely like a church basement. Yo, like, yeah. Oh, oh for yeah. For sure. Like Definitely. this is just a weird thing that they do on like Friday and every other Friday night in this yeah. church. It's like uh they're they're doing like he calls it club fighting. I'm a club fighter. I just fight in clubs, oh, you know. I, clubs, I just fight in clubs. Oh. It's like, no, you fight in, in the rectory <laughs> of like where they still also have a bar in this Catholic church, right? Like yes. that's what you're doing. They let them smoke in there. Yeah. It's exactly. Awesome. There is a knitting class going on next door. Next door. One hundred percent. Yeah, where they also have Sunday school. <laughs> exactly. It's like that's sometimes, just finishing up. Sometimes you get traffic from both, you know. So yeah. Everyone's while the parking lot's a little full. <laughs> oh, sorry. Kind of like down here in Czech Village. You yeah, never know right. what you're gonna get when you pull up. You're like, no one's here. Oh my god, everyone in town's here. Yep. Yeah. It's yep. the same time, same day. I just don't understand what's happening. I don't know why we don't have our own parking spots yet. <laughs> A- AJ, <laughs> question for you though. Okay, so he wins. Yeah. After it's over, he wins forty dollars and fifty five cents. Yep. With inflation, doesn't that seem pretty reasonable? Isn't that like a reasonable? Seems decent. F- so not bad. Uh, I did some math to give you an idea. Fifty dollars is, and I did also five hundred dollars okay. for later on in this. But fifty dollars in today's money is about two hundred and sixty eight dollars. So literally he's like it's like being in a in a cover band and playing the bar scene. Like right. you just spend about seven hours of your life like getting real tired and working your ass off right. and you walked away with some decent cash. He, he walked away with some okay money. Yes, like for a hot. It's a hobby. For he likes to do yeah, it. Yeah. He's making decent money at yeah. it. Yeah. For getting your ass beat. Yeah, all night. Like, like being in a cover band. True, true. For taking for taking a <laughs> so forehead hard. to the eye from a guy called Spider Rico. <laughs> yeah, dude. Forty one dollars. It seems a little low. And by the way, did you hear he's like rattling off all like the expenditures? <laughs> yeah, I if like you, it. If you're oh, in yeah. the band, if you're in a band, it's like, all right, you got your sound guy, you got to pay your bartenders. <laughs> yeah, you got to. You, you drank. Sure. Yeah, I owe you two hundred bucks. You drank three hundred dollars worth of <laughs> yeah, beer. It's like the beer. <laughs> <laughs> but it, I got to tell you, as a guy who who definitely has not seen the majority of this movie, yeah, like it's just it's very sad. It is. Like he he gets his money, the guy that he, he just beat his ass, like talking shit to him still, yeah. and then falls asleep. And Rocky's just like going, ah, oh, my head. And there's it's quiet. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're not hearing it. All you hear is like. 
distant yelling from the other I really, fight. I really like this shot a, a lot, too, because it's, well, Spider Rico is also, in any other movie, he's a villain right. of, like, uh, Batman or something like that. Oh, yeah. Spider Rico is definitely a villain name, uh, just, yeah. a, just a crony bad guy kind of dude. Yeah. yeah. But uh, he, they come, when uh, Rocky's walking into this uh, locker room, the shot's on him. And then it, you don't see the other guy until he sits down. And then you realize what's kind of going on, you know? Right. it's not. There's nothing, like, glamorous about this. Right. I like what uh, Raj said about it. It's like the punk club boxing scene, yeah, you know? Yeah. It's really, like, underground. And, like, this seems like they probably don't have a permit to be doing this, <laughs> but, like, they're still making money at it, you know? Yeah. Like, I really like that, that setup of it where it seems, like, uh, obviously very sad and, like, not professional. Is is yeah. really what I'm trying to get at, you know. Well, and you even see like during the fight, he's he's got a corner man, and that's part of the expenditures. <laughs> corner man costs this much money. Cut man, cut man, you know. And he says, uh, uh, yeah, locker and towel and all this stuff, right? Taxes. And he's he said uh, after taxes, he comes out to forty one seventy seven, whatever. But you can see during the fight that the corner man is trying to give him advice, but Rocky's not taking of it. Course. He's like, just give me water, just give me water. Nope, just give me water. And then the guy comes up next to him. He's like, hey, you feel strong? You're going to go for three rounds? You're going to knock him out? He's like, absolutely. You know, <laughs> he's he's actively not trying to get engaged by most people. Yeah, yeah, Like, even his corner man that he's technically paying for, whether he likes it or not. Does it seem like to you guys that he has been at this for a while and, like, maybe once had a chance to become, like, uh, uh, Carl Weathers character, Apollo Creed? Like, he had a chance before this you know what i'm saying you're asking about rocky yeah my my problem and he, like got disenchanted with it and is now doing this dude yeah. my problem with the movie it, like overall we'll get to it but my problem is is that we know nothing about rocky as a boxer mm. we we are we see this fight and then we know nothing until we get to the title fight where they say his record they say his record is 44 and 20 so like he can't be that good you know, like, there's no way he's a good boxer. He's had a lot of fights. Most of his wins come from knockout. Yes. He's a southpaw fighter, meaning, and you get, you get, and that's the thing. You know, we talk about this a lot. And we've said a lot recently. You're not spoon fed a lot about this character mm -hmm. or his background. And I think it adds to some mystery revolving around him, but you didn't, you didn't care for that. Well, no, I just, I, I want to know. Like, I, I want a little bit more. Like, yeah, I did, I did have this one chance and like, something happened you know like i was i was like on my way up to the top but really like we don't even get that which is what makes this sort of unbelievable mm. that that like is he that good could he actually beat apollo creed no i, like, see what I you're don't saying. think so yeah I, I definitely see what you're saying i i like that aspect of what kind of aj is getting at where it's like we have to kind of fill in the blanks and ask these questions yeah like, what was his background you know i think and i think we can kind of make it up and like how we feel about the character as this movie goes along. I think that the movie's really not about that, mm -hmm. his past, yep. you know? It's about this moment I right think now. it is about his one shot, like yeah. you're talking about. Like, he did have this one shot. And you get some more context as this goes on. He has that spat with Mickey where he's like, you know, I've been coming in here for six years, and for yeah. six years you've been sticking it to me. So we know he's he's had a long career. He's out of what would be considered his prime. And then he's been training for this long, and Mick does have contenders coming through his gym, as we find out, because he gets put on Skid Row. So that's the other end of it. You know, uh, when he goes back into Mickey's, he gets put on Skid Row mm -hmm. because so and so needs his locker. Yeah, you know, and so which means he's one hundred percent on the outs. He's on the outs, which he's, means he's washed up. Which means he never was good enough anyway, and now he's washed up. Yeah, and so that's what that's what starts to be like. Well, how in the world could this guy possibly beat Ap Apollo Creed? You know, mm -hmm. I I would almost like it better if he did just like he was just rejected because of something stupid he did. But he's mm -hmm. so good. But nobody's gonna just hone that in and give him a chance. It's like no, he's just not that good. You just you just you he's want just that like not that good. Yeah, you <laughs> you know you want that thing that. You know, oh, this is why. Yeah. It's because your attitude was bad. Yeah, or something. yeah. You, know, like, you picked the wrong gym, man. If you yeah. would have just had more money, you could have gone down to the good gym and they would have really <laughs> toned you. Yeah. But I but I say that I don't care enough to make that a huge deal. Yeah. Okay, okay. Like I don't but if you're asking me about Rocky as a boxer, I know nothing about him. It's we true. still don't know anything. When this movie's over, you're like, I think he's good. 
I think he's a boxer, and yeah. or I know at least he's a boxer. He he's did win a... this fight with, as we find out, kind of close, very close to this same scene. We find out that Spider Rico doesn't have much of a reputation either. Right, he's a bum in Mickey's eyes. Yeah, you know bum. what I mean. Um, and uh, yeah, but we also get back into kind of. It just takes us right from, hey, yes, this is a movie about a boxer. Here's what he did, and this is the environment that he boxes in. Yeah. And now he's going back to his day job. Yep. To to and, and that's why breaker. I'm fine with it. I'm yeah. just like I'm yeah. like that's not what this movie's about. Right. To and me, he, this movie's not about boxing. And it, yeah, okay. No, Which is crazy because the whole franchise is about boxing. Correct. But this movie's like no. This one is like literally just a rags to riches. Yes. Thing, and that's pretty much it. I they could have done like another thing with the character being this way and, and make him have a thing you know like well yeah he because one Man. one thing that never or one thing that always bothers me about this movie is that he's never protecting himself <laughs> nobody ever is um <laughs> we can talk about the fight scenes later but uh th they they could have given like today if they made this today they could have given him like a thing where like oh yeah when he was young he fucked up his hand and so now he's got like a piece of steel in his fist and that's why yeah, yeah. like there would have been something, something like that and that would have been his character but we get this to the find chip out. on his shoulder of sorts yes. to be like they never just gave me that shot exactly he even doesn't even want to take the shot he's like i don't know one don't know. of these things actually and i'll answer some of this even though i know we're kind of dragging this part out but it's like actually back then they allude to this and they 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 say it's right. because he's a southpaw right yeah that's why he doesn't get the shots that's why he doesn't get cuz nobody wants anything. to fight him nobody wants to fight a southpaw it makes other people look bad it makes people feel awkward so it doesn't make for a good fight all the time right so i i just realized i just remembered that mm -hmm. well i do want to tell you that like when i was young when i was in my 20s my teenage, late teens in the 20s, like me and my friends did some crazy shit, right? Yeah. yeah. Like we yeah, fucking, yeah. we stayed up late, we partied, we did wild stuff. Yeah, dude. But we never got as wild as standing on a street corner Fuck. around a fire and singing songs no. in reason. Not a these phone in sight, These man. kids are nuts. Not a phone <laughs> in sight. They're having the time of their life singing songs. Yeah, dude. Man, Good I, songs. Actually, dude. do you know what song they were singing? Uh no. It's so uh, one of the kids is Stallone's brother. Oh, uh, Frank, Frank Stallone. Frank, Frank Stallone. And that Stallone. is Frank Stallone's song that they're okay. singing. And he's <laughs> one of the kids in the group. But like that's just so there there are moments where you're like that would never happen. <laughs> 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 like you know we talk about unbelievable moments. This for me is the unbelievable moment of this. Like sure. not that Rocky beat Apollo Creed. It's like those kids aren't standing around the corner singing. <laughs> How old do you think they are? <laughs> I think they're like low twenties. Okay. And they're just like, we party, man. Yeah. We stay up late. <laughs> this is us party. This dude. is us partying, dude. <laughs> I mean, hey, it seems like kind of, it seems like it's not a, a, a skid row. <laughs> it seems like a skid row of Philadelphia. Like, it, you know, it seems yeah. like they don't have much. Yeah. So maybe, maybe this is all they have is just singing and fires. And we ain't got much, <laughs> but we got the blues and the wine tonight, boys. Yeah. I've been watching a lot of Trailer Park Boys. So all I picture is like yes. someone going, <laughs> shut up, stop <laughs> singing. <laughs> Doing this? <laughs> what is wrong with you? It is twelve thirty. You've been singing the Tuesday. same song yeah. over and over. Just pick a different song. That's all I really care about. Get a different song. <laughs> you suck. <laughs> <laughs> Do oh, you man. really want to <laughs> hurt me? <laughs> do, 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 do. You suck. You suck. So uh, right, we got Joe, <laughs> Joe Spinell as Gazzo. Yeah. I love Joe Spinell. He's, I think he's in All the Godfathers, and um, he's Maniac in the movie Maniac. Okay. Um, really cool Bill Lustig uh, slasher movie. Just a really cool uh, face. Like this guy, he's when he pops up in movies, I I always enjoy it. I I always find something to enjoy in every movie he's in. Mm. Uh, I think he was he popped up in uh, Cruising with Al Pacino. Cool actor. What do you guys think of Gazzo? And one, well, one thing I'll add to this too, we can kind of discuss. I didn't know that it, all the times that I've watched this that he was a like a loan shark collector, like never, kind of a gangster. Never knew that. Mm -hmm. That's in my notes too. Like never knew this was the backstory. Yeah. Because this is it, right? Like at, once this movie ends, that that never happens again. Right. 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 He never goes back to it. Yes, because he's now on this path. But you're right, dude. I like who's this guy? What's he do? Why is he roughing this guy up? Like it was it was a it was actually a really cool scene to watch him rough that guy up. But also you're developing the personality of Rocky here a bit mm -hmm. to where he's. He's still a nice guy, but he's just trying to get by, you know. But I, I thought, I thought Gaza was actually a very interesting character because he's like, I'm waiting for him to be the bad guy. Yes, I know. Yeah, 
when when he gives him that that five hundred bucks later on, mm-hmm. I was like, oh no. And then he shows up to his match. He's gonna ask him to throw the fight or something. Yeah, no, yeah. he's just a no. really nice gangster. I know. <laughs> he, he's just a, he's just the nicest gangster ever. He's this really is nice. the guy we've we've talked about this gangster before. He's trying to buy up drugs so he can get him off the street. Come on, yeah. you know. <laughs> That's when saying. did we talk about <laughs> that? <laughs> oh my god, it was during Bad Boys, I think. It was, like this oh, guy yeah. was, <laughs> it was the guy who's like, no, I'm buying all. See this two oh, million dollars of cocaine. I'm buying it so I can. Dump it down. So the he can <laughs> dump it down the toilet. <laughs> like he just, all he really wants is his money. You know, like just get your get your money to him, and he don't he won't have to break your thumb. It's true. Yeah. He just let a guy he later on. He says he's like, yeah, Del Rio. He's behind three weeks, and I just don't really like that very much. <laughs> So it's like, oh, okay, sure, sure. <laughs> it's, not, it's not like go fuck that motherfucker yeah. up. I need you. I need you. He told this guy to break, break Bob's thumbs <laughs> over two hundred dollars, and then you see Rocky, and he's like, he's like, hey, you know, you you want to dance? You got to pay the band. You know that kind of thing. I don't, he's like, I'm a neutral party and all of that. <laughs> I just love his dialogue. Actually, there was a lot of people that like were were kind of hating on some of the dialogue, and I'm actually a really big fan of it mm-hmm. because. His back and forth with Gazo, um, his his interactions with people is like I'm a neutral party in all this. You see, and he's <laughs> yes. like, he's he gets like, his glasses on to like yeah. read his notes and oh, stuff. By the way, I would love to have his glasses. They're Can not- I have his glasses? Yeah. Ooh, uh, here's a prop. Oh, did I he do press it? the button. He pressed the button. Sorry, you're gonna have you can you don't have to say glasses right now, but we're in the segment. Okay. So you, you you're gonna have to figure it out. I'm gonna have to figure this out. Okay. Well, I want his hat. I want his hat then. Yeah. Before we move on to our props, can you we want to be Jeremy Davies IMDb? Photo? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Sean. What do you Only want? on this podcast, though. Yeah. yeah. Um, I want the. So uh, apparently, he when he was hitting one of them slabs of meat, it like crushed his actual knuckles flat. Ugh. He punched it so hard. I want that slab of meat. Oh, okay. Yeah. So from the, 1976, the, the forty almost fifty year old piece of meat. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Nice. You're gonna hang it in your meat locker. Yeah. House? Just uh yeah, right in my garage. So but, see this? Uh, this Sticks in here. <laughs> this is uh this is the slab that Rocky punched in Rocky is, One. So you can this see one of his slab. knuckles embedded in one of the and I'll <laughs> just I'll just put something in there and say say it is. Yeah. You know. He did. He kept punching that thing for so long, so hard that he actually flattened out his knuckles. So his knuckles aren't rounded like most people's. They're flat to this day. I don't like because that. of That's this. crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta take. So I was gonna take the the young picture of him on the mirror nice. that he goes that he stares at. And he goes, mm. "I was hot. I was hot." <laughs> That's not what he's thinking. <laughs> but I do. I want the I want the pink robes that his crew are the they're like cardigans. They're cardigans. I yeah. want that that is that his team is wearing in the oh, final fight. Okay. Oh, yeah, they're pink and they got a little pocket and it says like Balboa on the back. Yes. Like I think I could wear that. Nice. I, I, think I would be love to awesome. be able to pull that off. Yes, you could do it better though. Has, well, no, no good. Has Burgess Meredith been the same age his entire life? He came out of the womb like that. He came out of the womb yeah. like literally like clenched teeth with like I, I assume like a cigar in his mouth like you you fucking bitch why'd you birth me? You they know? really they really thought the wrinkles were going to iron themselves out no. but they never did. No. Uh and his they attitude never, did. never got better. He was and still pissed about being born. Yeah. The moment he came out of that womb he put in an, a hearing aid <laughs> and put on a a a, a fisherman's yes. cappy cap. And that's what he's. That's what he does. And he's also been the same size. Yes, I find him weirdly endearing, though. Like it seems like he's always the asshole, like old man. But like you can't help but love him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and we'll get into that later. But I just I love uh, Burgess Meredith. Meredith I always said Meredith (laughs) Meredith Meredith Baxter Burgess. Meredith Burgess Meredith. I love Burgess Meredith. Yeah, he's great in this. He's the he's like the perfect person to play this role. Mm -hmm. In my uh, opinion, he was he was written in Stallone's very first original writing of this script, like layout. He was actually a much darker character. Yeah, he he was he was supposed to be a kind of a pretty stark racist to a degree, which ultimately I think caused him to like lose the fight on purpose or something like that. Yeah. Right. It was something along that yeah, line. It right? was that like Mickey was the one who made him disenchanted with the whole life of yes. boxing right. and yeah. And, and I'm glad it, they did not make that. Yeah, that's I am so too weird. because terrible. that would have been a one and done movie. Yes. You done. know? Uh but yeah, he was gonna be a very dark, very, very crotchety, like not wanting to do anything like I say, not just almost not a good person. Right. And basically caused Rocky to almost throw this fight early. And uh, I'm glad they did not make that movie. Yeah, keep the crotchety. Keep the crotchety. Crotchety is great. Drop the racism. 
You need the racism. Keep the crotch. You don't need the racism. It's in never there. good for you. you know, okay. He, he gets a couple jabs in there. Yeah. You know. <laughs> calls, yeah. Calls, uh, well, you goes know. Rocky a couple derogatory things. Yeah. But, you know, he yeah. gets it in there, but you know, he just try, try, dial it back. Seventies Philadelphia. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do have a question though. So it's like it's like noon on a Tuesday, and there's like fifty oh, yeah. adults oh. in this boxing gym, just like going <laughs> yeah. at it. Like, was boxing oh, yeah. just a really big deal in the seventies or something? I don't know, hey man. man, you didn't have all this technology. All right, in the seventies, you did one of three things: you either stood around flaming barrels with wine <laughs> and sang your heart out, or you got your ass in that gym. And you started working towards a goal, dang it. Actually, you're right. Now that I think about it, we think about all the modern day gyms we have and like ellipticals and yeah. all these things. Like that wasn't like a gym was just like weights, mm-hmm. either just go lift weights, yeah. run around the block or like do a sport. Exactly. And boxing's definitely like cardio and stuff like so maybe they were all just on their lunch break. Yeah. True. Yeah. Option That's option point. three, by the way, was was shoveling shit in a pet store. Ah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying. Um those are your three options in Philly at this point. You don't have much. In 70s. All of them will build your character, but uh, that's right. Maybe not docks. build your muscles. We're gonna yeah. oh yes. do- the docks. Sorry, four. you can work on the docks. Yeah. Do you think his, the docks. his like uh, persistence for uh, Adrian? Do you th- like at some point to me? I'm like, get the hint, buddy. Mm. Like uh, I don't I don't think she likes you or wants anything to do with anybody ever. Yeah. Well, she. Adrian Adrian is a very interesting character in this movie. I think she's more interesting than people give credit to. Yeah. Because especially as the movie goes on and you really see what her home life consists of. So I think that's what makes it such an interesting character and uh and why why he is probably so persistent is because she's shy mm-hmm. as they all know and say. Um, I don't mean to do this so fast, guys, but I think I got to give it to somebody. Okay. Hit it! If we were on a train to yes. go punch a face, yeah. I'm on board. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. It's Gazzo's driver. Yep. Duh. We're on the Gazzo's same Gazzo's driver. 100%. I kind of like him, though, because I, I kind of like how... He's sort of like he's sort of like uh, Chris Penn in uh, Reservoir Dogs. <laughs> oh, okay. Nice yeah. guy, Eddie. Nice, nice guy, guy, Eddie. <laughs> like he's sort of that way. Like, like he'll give it to you. He's but hey, just, we're balls. all just busting balls. Yeah. Here. Like I kind of like him, but also at the same time, he's a punchable face. It's it's horrible. The <laughs> shit that he says. Oh, no, the shit that he says is terrible. And he's like, hey, and then you have Gazo. He's like, he's like, hey, give it, give him a break. All right, it's his prostate. He's like, well, he's always in a bad mood. <laughs> you know what? You had cut your blessings. You're still a healthy person. You know. It's like, that's <laughs> Funny. Everybody <laughs> says they're in a bad mood. Gaza, <laughs> Gaza's awesome. like, and he's a good driver. I don't he's know, like, like, he's an <laughs> asshole. I'm like, hey, come on, my ears. He's I'm... actually really nice when you get to driving around with him all day. <laughs> he's got like, a good taste yeah. in music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. tell Great tell driver, him. too, man. He always brings a new cassette when we're going to, eight track when we're about to, you know, get on the road. <laughs> Horrible yeah. with women. Yeah, uh, kind yeah. of kind Sucks of an asshole. It. But he does say those, he says those remarks about yes, Adrian. Yes. And and like that's when you're just like, yeah, th- I just need to punch you in the face. Because I was I was liking him up until then he started to say those and you're yeah. like, all right, fine. Fuck yeah. this guy. Yeah. It, like take her to the zoo and you're just like, okay. But yeah, Sean, you want to talk about Adrian. Like it's it sucks that all these movies back then really portrayed the like well, she wants. She, of course, I know. I can tell that she loves me. She's she just needs shy. me to be broken she, she out of her shell. And, it, and it, I think it did teach a generation of yeah. men that that is totally acceptable. Persistence, just Persistence. go after. Just, just come on. You just got to keep forward. And it really sucks because even Rocky, <clears throat> the second time he goes in there, he talks about, "Well, there's a lot of creeps around here," and like. I view yep. him as a fucking creep. You're this, nowadays, he creep, would be. this could be like, a horror movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this yeah. this guy, we all know Rocky. Like, like take Sylvester Stallone Rocky out of it. We all know you've met him. He's not your friend, but you've met him at a bar where he's just a fucking weirdo creep that does not know how to talk to people mm-hmm. and just like is overly persistent on certain women. And like those are fucking serial killers. Yeah. Those are serial killers. That Rocky <laughs> is one step away from being a serial killer. He's 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 a couple punches away yes. from being a serial killer. Yeah. yeah it's it's right. good that he has that outlet. Otherwise yeah. we, we might not know. There could be a the butcher of Philly. Exactly. You know? And he's got he's got well 
Adrian's brother to help out dispose. Oh, uh, no, right? Uh, I don't like that. Well, that's I'm a think, great movie, actually. That's a great movie. Idea. Uh, I mm. think, ooh. Recut. <laughs> okay. Well, and think about think about Rocky, too. Like, he's already demonstrating bad behavior. He steals that fish food. Does oh, he? The turtle food Doesn't or whatever? Doesn't she say it's okay? I don't know. I'm pretty sure he just, like, he goes, like, ah, I'm not going to pay for this. And she's like, you got to pay for that. And then he just goes... And he just leaves with it. I'm, <laughs> no, pretty, I'm, sh- I'm pretty sure he just leaves with it. I'll, I'll be back later to harass you more. <laughs> <laughs> Make me. Uh. <laughs> it's like, uh, do you think? Okay, so then that does, that brings up the question: Do you think the pet shop owner lady is is trying to protect Adrian from this creepo guy who By keeps sending coming her, in, yeah. sending her down? Yeah. yeah. Oh my god! Instead that- of her just being a, a jerk about it, like where we we. Normally, you would perceive her as being like, well, you're just, what a cock block. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, Dude, I used to work in a bar where there was a fucking creeper. It was actually a cop. And he was a creeper on this bartender that we had, this yeah. girl. And whenever he'd come in, she'd be like, God damn it. And we'd be like, here, just go. You got to go do dishes tonight. And she'd be like, thank you. Mm. You know, like, go, just get away. And like, was that happening in this? <sighs> See, this is, the, that's the, this is the problem. We're basically, Rocky... And Adrian is basically baby. It's cold outside. It's, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> like, it yeah. really is, dude. It's basically, baby, it's cold outside. No, but, like <sighs> it is. I, and we've got more of this. More it's of so, their it's so endearing, though. More of their relationships <laughs> coming up. Except, except their baby, it's cold outside happens on Thanksgiving. So that's really <laughs> what it is. Yeah. Well, Good call. It's it's hard to like. It is the movie, and it like as we say when these things come up. It was the eighties, or it was the seventies. The seventies. Um, you know, but like I, I don't know. I feel like that that was that was a thing back in the seventies too, being creeped out by people like this. But uh, women have been creeped out by men since the beginning all of the time. Since the beginning of time, I've <laughs> creeped women out. Well, <laughs> We've all the time. All done it. This is and this is why I back in the day. 50s, 60s, 70s, even before that, right? This this part of the relationship was called courting. Courting. Where basically it was We're just the courting, dude courting, and it's just the guy harassing her enough to get a date. Just yeah. just him rambling on and on about this and that, and telling these jokes, and like uh, and not letting her get a word in at all. You correct. Know? Like maybe she even wanted to talk to him, like the first time he came up to her, <laughs> but he just kept going, and she's like. Uh, you know what? I'm just gonna well, put these... my turtles. Yeah, That's what I got for me. I'm a turtle guy. So, I'm like turtle shark. So, do, you know? do you also like turtles? <laughs> I have turtles at home. Do you want to come over and see my turtles? Because if you want to, we could hang out no, with I my sold, turtles. I sold them to you, so I don't really need to. They're exotic animals. No, I know we got. We do you want to come see my turtles? <laughs> no. Do you want to come over? <laughs> I just can, can I, I tell you I'm a boxer. You have have said, you seen with that ball that? I'm can I can I come over to your house? No, I. Do you want to hang out at your house? I don't. I know your brother. I want to go home. <laughs> God damn. Is it okay if me and your brother play video games? There's someone. I have a phone call downstairs. <laughs> Is it okay? If, <laughs> Is it okay if I we play video games? It, you can, come, can we spend the night? <laughs> Shut up! You want to sleep I'm over? calling the cops. <laughs> you want to sleep over? <laughs> Let's move this on to scene two. So dejected for his, dejected from his conversation with Mick, Rocky leaves and goes back to see Adrian at the pet store. Rocky then goes to Lucky Seven Tavern for a beer with Adrian's older brother, Polly. On his way home, Rocky notices a group of teenage kids standing on the corner. He pulls a young girl away and walks her home. The next day, the champion boxer, boxer of the world, Apollo Creed, is meeting with Miles Jurgens about his upcoming fight. The boxer that was supposed to compete is injured, so they hatch a plan to give the title shot to an unknown underdog fighter. Apollo chooses Rocky because he likes the name Italian Stallion. Nice. Oh, I mean, like, uh, speaking of Adrian, still, uh, her brother, I mean, obviously is very violent towards her and also says some gross fucking shit about her. I know. It's like she's going to dry up if she doesn't get, like, what the fuck, yeah. dude? Why is Rocky friends with this son of a bitch? It's, it's true. It's, I, think it's, I think it's Polly is, wants to be friends with Rocky. Do you guys feel differently? Uh, and he feels bad, so he just lets it. He just lets him be his or friend. Maybe, well, okay. yeah, it's hard to know because he he goes in, he finds Polly in the bathroom, you know, when he's in the bathroom at that bar, right. and he kind of does seek out Polly, I guess. But maybe he's maybe he wants to be friends with Polly because he likes his sister. That's more what. Maybe I that's thought. what it is, right? <laughs> nobody wants to be no. friends with Polly. <laughs> that's a good point. Nobody wants to be friends with Polly. No, nobody probably is friends with Polly. Then you, yeah, you're at this bar too, and you. I found it very interesting that uh, him, Rocky, and the bartender. Are watching the Apollo Creed like mm-hmm. newscast, mm-hmm. 
and he call and the bartender calls him a, a derogatory name clown. Mm. And and I was like, I was like, ugh. And then the what I thought was cool, and I don't know if this was a choice or not. Like he says, you're a derogatory word clown to Muhammad or to to or, sorry, they're talking about Apollo, Apollo Creed. Creed. The bartender's like that. Man, yeah. yeah, that guy. And and um, Rocky like looks at him like, why are you calling him a clown? Like yeah. he focuses on the the word the clown word, yeah, right, and not the derogatory word. So like I can't I can't decide if like that was a choice. Like I almost like that he's like we're not even going there. Like you're you're talking about his boxing skill. He's he's viewing him as like a boxer, not a different race or not not anything. You know, like I, I found it to just be a weird interaction that I don't know where they were going with that or how I feel about that moment. Hmm. You know, yeah, I don't know either. It's in, that's interesting. I never, I didn't really pick up on. Yeah, that. it's I. It, that's that's a really interesting point, and it's it, but it it shows that Rocky has respect for a lot of people. Yeah, he, yeah. for almost for really anybody, he holds people to a high regard yes. around him. Even though, like Apollo Creed, it's very easy to slander somebody who has fame and fortune, because you just get to say like, "Oh yeah, it must be nice." Uh, oh yeah, bet you didn't work hard at all. Blah blah blah. But Rocky, who is kind of at the bottom, you know, of what he does mm -hmm. and trying just to make ends meet, is just he has this respect for Apollo. But he could easily and he dive could easily in there just, too and just be like fuck that guy. Yeah, he's like, like yeah, too. that guy sucks. He doesn't deserve he's not it. That good. He's like Apollo Creed. He's like he's like that guy's he's the champion best. The world, he's a man. champion of the world. Like he is. You can't call him a clown. He's yeah. definitely a man of principle, and I think that's what's yeah. a lot. A lot of what's endearing about Rocky is that right. yeah, he could, like it is so much easier to uh, tear something down than it is cr to create something. It's so much easier to. Uh, put down somebody than it is to compliment them, you know? Right. And I think uh, he sees good in just about everybody. And, like, even th this Marie scene, this girl he uh, yeah. right. walks home. I think, this is, I think this is actually a very important scene. I do, too. I mean, like, I, I was watching it, and I'm like, I, if I walked one block with Rocky, he would put my whole life straight. <laughs> he would tell yeah. me, you got to do this. You ain't doing that, you know? Yeah. And, uh, I mean, obviously she doesn't listen, but, you, you know, his intention, I think, is uh, very uh, valuable, in yeah. my opinion. Yeah, his intent is is very good behind all this. I mean, it is. He's pulling her. He's like, you know, there was a girl and when back when I was a, a kid, and we were all hanging out, and she gained a reputation. See, they don't remember you. They remember the rep. The rep. They see, that's what they remember, the rep. You know? And, like, that's that's what he's about, and he's trying to help He's trying to help this girl, like, not develop this bad reputation of hanging, you know, doing that and in the end it's like all right night rock it's like all right night it's like hey rock it's like yeah what's up it's like screw you creepo you're just like <laughs> damn i thought you just had a nice conversation all right i don't know <laughs> it I just kind of it just solidifies like <sighs> he is like rodney dangerfield not getting any respect this, this to me though I, I don't buy in what you guys are saying like this is him being more of a creeper you like, think this so? is weird this is two and a half minutes of him just going on and on about not, do, you better not be a whore. You better not fucking do this. Like, like it's just, <laughs> first of all, it's way too goddamn long. Like, this, this is two and a half minutes of him just blabbing, not letting this girl talk again. He's walking but, her home. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Like, <laughs> like, I don't know, though, man. Like, this feels very creeper. And then, then I think there's a moment there. Where she's like, yeah, screw you. And he's like, and he even says, well, who who, are, who am I to give advice? You know, yeah. which is very true. Like, who is Rocky to give any advice on anything? You it know, like, it, it seems to me like, yeah, I mean, I, I like that he says that. I like that that line's there because it seems to me like he does have advice to give, but he's not taking it his own. Okay, yeah. You know? And I think that, like, even, like, talking to Adrian or this Marie girl is just, like, him basically journaling you know, mm -hmm. it's like him just saying the words because he's always been thinking about this. And then he's like, yeah, I guess I I guess I'm really nobody either. I feel like I would like to ha ha hear a conversation between Rocky Balboa <laughs> and Jordan Peterson <laughs> <laughs> and just be like, <laughs> just be like, you know, you you want to you want to you want to you want to dance. You got to pay the band. Right. You don't remember you. They remember the rep. And no, he's I just really like, think clean you your just, room. You should just make your bed. <laughs> you need to clean your room. You can't be giving advice the, the if you don't even have your own life in order. Clean your bloody room. Clean your bloody room. And then <laughs> his place is a mess. <laughs> his place is a mess. You know, because your place probably stinks. It stinks. <laughs> and that's your fault. And, and that's, that's no good. 
And that's no that's good. That's no good. <laughs> that's no good for anybody. You don't want to bring a young lady home to your, to your apartment <laughs> that stinks. Oh, he's Irish. You need to make your bed. You need to make your bed. <laughs> it's pretty fucking good. <laughs> Jordan, he's a leprechaun. Now. Actually, this, you <laughs> do a good rock, you do a good Jordan. You should just sit down and make a TikTok where <laughs> you're looking at each other <laughs> and you're just having a conversation because you'd be really good at that. <laughs> Clean your room. But but it is, there is, to talk about the score for a second, that is just brilliant that they can take that theme and make it be negatively minor and sad. You know, that same... Yeah. It's beautiful the way that piano plays this sad, like, middle of the night, walking off into the shadows. Like, I, I think it's brilliant. The, just that simple melody can mm-hmm. live throughout this whole series and mean so many different things. It's great. It's, yeah, I, it, that's why I think makes it such. It's so iconic. It makes it. It makes it so versatile. And I, I can't remember who does who who Bill did the music. Conti. Bill Conti. Of what course. else did he do? Uh, he's uh, done so much. Um, it's been a ton, right? I think he did Karate Kid. Maybe. Yeah. yeah yep. Right. Um, I got you. He's done a bunch. John yeah. G. Avelson, Bill Conti, mm-hmm. just taking it down. Good baby. team. Um, but yeah, like uh, the music. The music is so important to this movie. It's it's so it's. Sean, to steal your words, it's as much of a character I think of this movie as anything else. It's telling you how to feel. Yeah, when it, whenever it comes it. on, it's yeah, giving it's you like the context without telling you anything. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. The the fact that there is not much of it in this in, until like it's needed. Yep. You know, is uh, very uh, brilliant in my opinion, just because like you're just watching this guy who's it's kind of a depressing movie up until we get our like uh, inciting incident, which is right here, but. Um, Bill Conti doesn't come in until it's just like, okay, yeah, we, we want to see our character walking down a barren street after being told to fuck off, basically, you know, and so here's how you should feel. Yeah. I uh, Yeah, I think it's great. Yeah, I'll agree. Uh, something about something about the setting of this rundown Philadelphia and the way some of these shots are framed, like, it just, it paints a picture. I love nighttime city mm-hmm. from the 70s and 80s. I don't know why. It feels different on film sometimes, and this is just like... I'm with you. Him walking... Oh, it's warriors, like, yes. it just feels that yeah. way to me. His outfits in this movie, too, like his wardrobe and everything, mixed in with this near the docks, walking yep. to downtown, walking to his his neighborhood... It is just a whole feeling like I could have that on a reel of five mm-hmm. minutes of just that stuff with this music playing yep. over. And like that would be enough of a vibe for me, man. Like I, I just I love it so much. I want to give whole props because I like uh, when I was watching this movie as a kid, I de- didn't really pay attention to the acting or none of the filmmaker or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Carl Weathers is so fucking good in this. Oh, and yeah. And like this Apollo Creed, what he comes up with to like get the the Philadelphia guy get yeah. the hometown hero kind of thing into a fight is kind of brilliant. Yeah. Like marketing wise it's and the everything. the only thing that they could have done at yeah. this point. And it, it's actually pisses me off that the promoter didn't fucking think about yeah, this. Yeah. It makes 100%. so much sense. Like, like, what are we paying you for, bro? He was about to be my most punchable face, but you do realize he is also, he's a neutral party in all yeah. this. And that's what I like about a lot of these characters is that there's no evil, evil plot to take down Rocky. To embarrass somebody. Right. Yeah, yeah. They all have their motives for reasonable reason. That's a really good point. Yeah. Like they could have totally done that. We don't want to lose this fight. We've already put so much into this. Like we need to come up with something very quick. And Apollo Creed shows how brilliant he is by thinking of this marketing. And not only not only like give me a fighter who will put on a good show, it's the name, man. Mm -hmm. Italian stallion. (laughs) Italian style. I don't want you messing with no southpaw. He's like, ah, I'll put him down in three. I'll you put know? him down yeah. in three. He's yeah. really not thinking about the fight. He's not. He's not even. Yeah, I like what you said. He's not even really thinking like I'm gonna kill this guy. Yeah, you know, he he doesn't know what's gonna happen. We I need they, to put on the fight. The movie could have totally done that, and they didn't. You're, yeah, that's a really good point. So I I like that, and I think that showed some actually very quick um, character development when it could have been drawn out, or we it could have yep. been very lazy. I do. I do have a problem though. Like, who? Why would? Why could no one fight Apollo? Like, this is something that if you're a fighter and you're in the pro ranks, and you got even if you get five weeks, like you do it. You say yes for the, to a title fight to make your name well more well known to get a big payday. Like, no one said yes. You asked everyone, and no <laughs> one wanted to fight the champion of the world. 
It's true. <laughs> like, well, <laughs> no one. So uh, they, well, uh, I guess, can I break this down for a second? Everyone like, got sick. You have, yeah, you have one the, guy. Oh, one guy broke his hand, and one guy just fought last week. It's like, well, you have the number one contender, two, three, four, five. You continue down the list, right? And that's what you really should be going for, right? Like basically looking at the top ten list of fighters. Okay, right? And not is, one of them said. Yeah. And not one of them would take 10, this, right? Yeah. This is, so, so is that is you know do they not want their uh, they step in. They haven't been prepping for a fight, and they they don't want to ruin what their rank and title is is mm-hmm. at, like that kind of thing. I don't know. Okay. I'm just trying to Sean, rationalize. Sean, this is well. Who's your? What's your most favorite band in the world? Hard, hardcore band in the world God. right now. Who's the big? Who's the biggest hardcore band that you love? I, I like Better Lovers. They're new, but I like them a lot. Okay, let's say that they have a show coming up in two weeks, uh, in Cedar Rapids, in front of forty thousand people, and they ask Dream Thief, your band. To open up for them, but the problem is, is your singers on vacation. You just broke your foot. Um, you just played two days before that. Everyone's tired. There's no money involved. You guys have to make all these changes to to get that shot that you've been waiting for your whole life. You do it right. Your singer goes, "I'll come back early from vacation." Yeah. yeah. Everyone <laughs> says yes to that. <laughs> you make it happen. Oh, I mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, for AJ. because we're talking about the movie. No, yeah, no. <laughs> you, See how he shifts, you'd have to he find... shifts his direction. So he wants to. Ex- he's, he's like, all right. So care. now, now I'll cut Sean out after I cut AJ out of this guy. I, I just Sean? dismantled Sean. Thank you. So. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. AJ. <laughs> like, I call my next witness. AJ. Okay. Uh, Abercrombie and Fitch calls. Oh yeah. Ooh ooh ooh. <laughs> and, and they want a new clothing line to bring on. I'm just kidding. L- listen, we'll move on from that because sure. there's an important thing he talks about. How we got to get. It's on America's bicentennial. You got to get what better than a a man from Italy, the the man who discovered America, an Italian. Yeah. Fuck Christopher Columbus. <laughs> he yeah. did not discover shit. No, he didn't. He didn't discover shit. No, nope. this country was already inhabited. Thank you. It's all right, but they. Well, see, in 1976, the books weren't teaching that yet. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Still aren't. I just, any chance I get to talk about Christopher, <laughs> Christopher Columbus, Columbus, fuck you. Yeah. Fuck you, Christopher Columbus. Um, and did. your legacy. <laughs> <laughs> let's, get to, let's get a little more positivity here. Uh, and your legacy. I'm sorry. I like this guy, Tony Burton. <laughs> oh, wow. Cool. I Tony, love Tony his, Burton. His right hand, uh, Apollo Creed's right hand man, kind of yes. trainer guy. Yep, his trainer. He's also in The Shining. Yep. Oh. That's I was like watching him going, huh? Yeah, he gets uh, Howler in the Snowcat. In the yes, shining. Dude. I was like, oh my god, where the hell do I know him? The Shining. Yeah. And Tom. actually, I, th- I think uh, it wasn't him. Um, actually, they were gonna get uh, like Lee Strasberg to play Burgess Meredith. Uh, uh, or, well, his character, sorry, Mickey. Um, and Lee Strasberg is like a like a teacher of acting. And uh, Tony Burton studied under him, which I thought was kind oh. of a cool thing. Well, real quick, we got to consult the Jarrett Layoff actor database of any movie we've done. So Tony Burton's been in three movies. <laughs> this one, The Shining. He was also um, Bill Jukes in Hook. He oh. was one of the pirates in Boom. Hook. Yep. He was at the Boo Box. Yep, he was That's at the Boo right. Box, dude. Oh, okay. Here he was. Yeah, he was right at the Boo Box, man. Yep. Nice. So just got to throw that out there. Good dude. The Boo Box. Well, let's move on to scene number three. So Rocky goes to Polly and Adrian's house on Thanksgiving. After an altercation, Adrian agrees to go out with Rocky. On Polly's advice, Rocky and Adrian head for the local ice rink where Adrian skates and Rocky walks next to her. After the date, they go to Rocky's apartment for a passionate evening. The next day, Rocky is called to Jurgen's office and offered the Apollo fight. He accepts. It's time to break down Polly, my friends. All right. Because uh, Pauly, I've never liked Pauly in, in all the movies. He always just plays that weird role of the, like, the guy you just can't get rid of. He's Burt there. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you, exactly. He's just the guy. And, like, yeah, he's here. And he always kind of fucks up. Yep. And, like, this whole scene of the turkey makes me – he wanted to be my per- most punchable face. But I had I had to break down Paulie for a second because think about the life that this man has right now. He's got this shitty job, right, that he's not going to be able to do much longer. He's been living in in a rundown area of the city. He's not having a lot of money. He doesn't have a wife. He's like taking care of his sister. Like this man, this man is a pretty sad and dejected man. Mm-hmm. That like you can't condone his behavior, but you can understand like where he's coming from. He's not. He doesn't have much, and he hates everything. He's an alcoholic. He just there's no light at the end of the tunnel for this guy. Yeah, I mean, what, what are you saying? Are you saying like you just have some sympathy for him? No, or? I'm not necessarily saying have sympathy because everybody in this movie, there's like no 
arcs in this movie. Everybody just sort of is doing what they got to do to get by. And however they do that, they just kind of do it. Yeah. You know, I mean, like the, the gangsters is like, ah, shit. I mean, this is just what I do. And Paulie's just like, I'm an asshole. Like, yeah. It, life sucks. <laughs> so, Rocky, Rocky's got his things, his vices, you know, like everybody does. I would, I would wholeheartedly uh, encourage anybody to go and read Roger Ebert's entire review um, because he gives a great little breakdown for each character. And to your point, uh, he had this to say about Burt Young. He says, Burt Young, as her brother, defeated and resentful, loyal and bitter, caring about people enough to hurt them just to draw their attention with the, to his grief. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's know, it's, a hundred percent encapsulates it for me. It's it, like it, yeah, it, I mean, like it's 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 hard to watch, and it's and it's like it makes you angry because you're just like like if you just look around, you're doing kind of fine, you know. Like if you, I mean, if you truly just kind of look at your situation, and if it's not fine. What you got to do is work to make it fine, man. You know, like yeah. and I know you you're wanting to get on Gazzo's team, but that's not the way. Like Rocky's, I think, protecting him from that. Right? Is that yeah, the I, kind of I feeling feel you get? That way, yeah. I mean, but 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 Paulie's looking ahead, going, "What does Paulie do? He carries meat. Carries meat at the locker, the meat locker. He's not gonna be able to it's do that for much longer. Guy. Yeah. Like he's he's looking at the end of the tunnel, going, "Oh fuck." Yeah. Like and and it's it's just like you don't have the sympathy, but you're also like, "What is his? What is behind him?" Like what happened to this guy? But but if he can't carry meat, like why can't he carry meat? I th- he's just old. Well, I think, but he wants to go and do what Rocky does for Gaza. He doesn't know what that entails. Exactly, yeah. he doesn't. But he says I can't carry meat any longer at this at one point or another. He's like I can't I can't do it anymore, and it's like he's just he's just tired of doing it. What I don't know if I believe that Polly is too broken of a man physically. To not do this job anymore. I think he's been doing it for so long that he just simply can't bring himself to do it anymore. It do, it all, I, sorry. I just I just think that like I still think that Polly Polly is he's a, he is also a fairly complex character, but he he is also the moment that Rock gets this fight yeah. says, So I guess you're gonna need people to help you out now. Yeah. He is looking and and I found a way to make money off of your name. Go ahead. And he says, go ahead. You know, Rocky gives him every opportunity yeah. for the right opportunities, but he denies him for Gaza because he's like, you don't want to do that. You know, I yeah. don't know. The, well, there is the the fact, too, where he could, like, be bitter. <clears throat> he is bitter anyway, but he's also, like, even more bitter once he does get this offer because it's like it was literally handed to him. Correct. You know? And that's another thing about this movie where I'm just like, if you, you know, it was a lucky thing. That he got to do this, you know, dumb it, w- luck. it wasn't like Complete that. He, he did luck. work for it after he after the fact, right? He worked for it, worked to uh, uh, condition himself to yeah. do this, but it was literally handed to him. Yeah. But what if? But what if Paulie? What if you look at it from this? Him throwing this huge temper <laughs> tantrum. He's throwing this giant. By gigantic- the way, sorry, one thing. If you don't want to pick up meat anymore, why'd you throw that turkey? <laughs> Thank you. Get the fuck out. Of why'd here, you Paul? carry the turkey out the door? Oh, look, you're so good at it. <laughs> Oh, sorry, no, Mike. no, that is <laughs> no, that's fantastic. That's what I was gonna say. <laughs> that's what I was gonna say. <laughs> no, he. What if? What if deep down he throws this temper tantrum to make Adrian leave the fucking house and go out with Rocky? <laughs> okay, yeah. Like, what if he's like, no, she has to do. She has to do this. Yeah. Like, what if that was his only way to make this happen? Yeah. Like getting a kid out of the house and stop playing fucking video games yeah. and shit. You yeah. know, yeah, phone inside. Well, yeah, you know, inside. honestly, I do have a f- have sympathy for him because it, he's a human, and I know that Rocky does too. And like, they don't have anybody; it's just them, you know. And like, he wants more. Like, I think Roger put it perfectly. He wants more for Adrian too. So he, yeah, and this is just his way of showing it, which is wrong, of course. But you know, yeah, but it works I out good for Adrian that he. <laughs> oh, yeah. th- th- this is the catalyst for the entire movie. Yeah, for, for, yes. for Adrian's future and Rocky's future is this moment. Yeah, it's but it's uh, it's heartbreaking because you have to think like in the seventies. Like people didn't have like the abundance of turkeys at the grocery store yeah. to just go out and grab like he a kept turkey. A, leg. a turkey dinner was a is a, like a nice thing. There's a gas crisis, you know. There's like <laughs> there's a gas there crisis. There is. That's what I hear. <laughs> and it's just like you remember. It's one of those things that's like it's you have you don't have a lot, but you got enough, yep. and you got like what you have. You it, it is nice, and he chucks that thing out. Her hard work, and it's kind of heartbreaking. It is it very is. heartbreaking. And uh, and then he's and he goes back, and I just think about Rocky and how he's just like. 
<laughs> yeah, uh, I, I should probably go. I huh? should. I should just. I go, should. Uh, I should leave. Why? Well, I, I should leave. I'd I'll, have been I'll leave. out of there. Dude. I'll leave. I'll leave. <laughs> but, who, <laughs> I, but I really want to stay because I want to be a creeper to Adrian for this date. Uh, but I really want to make your sister. But I really want to make your sister. Uh, I know she's beautiful. Just take off the glasses. I just need her to take off the jacket. <laughs> so this ice skating uh, scene. Uh, they were originally supposed to have like fifty extras for this, like yes. skating around. Oh my god! Yeah. And the, it's this movie is like truly a run and gun, yes. low budget, guerrilla style filmmaking to a T. And I think Stallone got there, and there was the one guy, like the Zamboni driver or whatever. <laughs> yeah. He's like, "What the fuck?" And it's like John G. Allison is just like thinking of things on the fly. He's like, "Okay, so uh, it's closed down." Uh, and it's kind of more romantic because it's just you two, you know. And you get in like let's have a little scene with the uh, Zamboni guy. This is John G. Alvinson, man, and this is like truly why I miss him as a fi- he's dead mm. now. I miss him as a filmmaker, and he's all of his like films are very journeyman like. You know, he's like Karate Kid and this are pretty similar, but then like Lean on Me, right? You know, it's it's a really cool career, and um, I think he had he had a quote actually about movies. It's like every time we didn't have enough money, things got better. Wow, and, cool. And I'm like, I totally get that, man, because you have to think on the fly. And then get you, raw. You, just you, yes, it, get raw. And that's what this movie is about, is this, just like getting down and dirty and Sean, doing this shit. Sean, awor- this wouldn't have worked for me if there were a lot of people skating around. No. It would have been totally different. It would have been weird. There would have just been too much going on. I like that there's never anyone around in this town. There's no, no one's ever around, and I fucking love that, because yeah. it adds to the... The desolation of like where they live yeah. and like the loneliness, the, the loneliness yeah. of their neighborhood. Yeah, fuck. Of course, nobody's in a poverty neighborhood on Thanksgiving going <laughs> ice skating. Yeah. yeah, of course they're not. Right? Why would they do that? It, it it just I think it just adds so much and uh, some other movies that we've we've had on the show <coughs> that it, it like you said it having less opened up the possibility of mm-hmm. better writing mm-hmm. yep. and it demanded more more creativity from. From the director, from Stallone, the writer, he had a hand in that too. Um, a lot of that, like it opened up so many more doors because they had these restrictions. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, 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 that's that's another reason why I I have really grown to enjoy this movie more is because I know now more about it in the yep. background and and what it took to make this movie. And there's some more points coming up probably as we get into like number four or scene four, but. Um, but yeah, I just think I think it's it's so endearing that they could come up with that on the fly. And I think I'll bring this up now because I think Stallone's performance uh, is is actually very endearing. If you had a solid actor who is speaking more clearly in some sort of sense, Stallone knew who this character was. Mm-hmm. He knew who he was. He didn't think about who he was. He knew who he was. And if you had somebody else like even like James Caan playing this character, He's not going to have that back and forth the same way with that Zamboni driver. He's like, where he says, 10 bucks, 10 minutes. He's like, what about eight bucks, 10 minutes? He's like, it's like, come on, it's Thanksgiving. He's like, all right, nine bucks, you got a deal. It's like, come on, it's Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> all right, give her the blades. You know, it steps give away. Give the blades. Hey. Does the clock start now or is it once we get on the ice? <laughs> right. <Yeah>. So, <laughs> hey, takes a long time the- to put hockey skates on. <laughs> are you close to the general public or are you close to everybody? You know what I mean? Which makes no sense, by the way. I, it, <laughs> I don't it know does. what you mean. <laughs> it does make sense. Are you, does. are you close to the general public, or are you ch- close to everybody, even special privileges? We're, we're all the general public, girl. <laughs> I'm trying to get her out of her, out of her shoes and out of her... I want to see them feet. I want to see like, the feet. I want to <laughs> see her skate. <laughs> she's truly herself when she skates. So come on, you know, you know what I'm, yeah, I'm trying to do. Obviously, cause you can see that she's not doing too well. You know, like, he is... He's a, he's a fill, he's a hustler to the nth yes. degree, but he has a heart, mm-hmm. and that's again I think it shines through in Stallone's performance of this character. It's truly a passion project, and I like I, I, I would love that this movie won Best Picture because everything about it was a passion project. Like John G. Alvinson didn't even want to do it because he's like I don't even know about boxing, I don't care. He's like, but then don't the, worry, this isn't about boxing. The, literally, the <laughs> thing that convinced him was the totals. Totals. To- totals, can't like Link and uh, Cuff, Cuff and Link. Cuff and Link. Get like it? it was, it was that, and he's like, "That's cute. I'll do the movie." <laughs> and so he like watch a bunch of boxing movies and boxing matches. He's like, okay, I got this, you know. But he he wanted he obviously he knew it was wasn't just a boxing movie, right? It was, of course, it was this character study. Yeah. So we're moving on to this scene. Let's do it. Of of Rocky taking Adrian to his apartment, forcing her into the apartment, forcing her <laughs> to sit down. Forcing her to against the wall, not letting her leave, 
showing how strong he is. If we th- if we thought it was bad early on, like this is this is literally the epitome of what not to do. If if like if you're ever talking to Harrison about the birds and bees, <clears> you're <throat> going to show him the scene, and be like, "This is what you don't don't do. do. This is what this. you don't do. If you like a girl, you don't do any of this." She this- seems extremely uncomfortable, man. I and I'm uncomfortable watching it. To so, be honest. so do you guys watch uh, Cinema Sins on YouTube at all? Uh, yeah, some of them. one. Of, I, I have to give him a shout out because usually what I do is I I watch the movies, I do all my notes, and usually like. Before we come record, I'm like, we're usually on the same page here, but let me watch <laughs> uh, everything wrong with whatever movie. Uh, let me see if you let me see if you found something. And he did this scene so perfectly. He said that if you take this and you add horror music to the background of yes. this, this is a psycho serial killer horror scene, and it sure as shit is. All you do is put <laughs> horror music behind this. Uh, you're not going anywhere. You know, you don't want to be here. It's fucking terrifying. Come on in. Come on, what you do? Come on in. Come on. Hey, yo. Hey. Yo, hey, come on in. I'm charming. I'm charming. Look at my, I got exotic animals in here. You like animals. I sold them I saw to you, fucking dickhead. You fucking dickhead. Like she says, I don't know, like a handful of times, maybe even two fucking fistfuls of times, I got to go. I got to go. <laughs> and it sucks because then she really loves it and they fall in love. Yeah. And it's literally just being like, no, I see, I told you, she wanted it. And now now we're in love. Because, it's like, like ah. literally the next scene almost is them sitting on the couch together and she's head over heels. Like, come on, babe, let's do it again. I can't do it. Right now. <laughs> can't. Come on, I want to do it. I've never done it before. And now I want it all I the time. I need to save yeah. my juices. All right. <laughs> Did- Women weaken legs. <laughs> Did you Just know because you're not getting any, Mickey? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Did you know though that it is a proven fact, and it was proved in this movie. It's been proven millions of times that when you do finally have sex, your vision gets better, and you never have to wear glasses ever again. Nice. She doesn't wear glasses the rest of this movie. Yeah. Oh it, yeah. It, yeah. It boosts. They're gone. The, uh, whatever is in carrots to help your eyesight yep. just boosts that up like she five thousand percent. I'm wearing my glasses right now. <laughs> oh. Yeah. No, those are just Felix Grays. They're the they're just blue blocking. Yeah, they're just blue blocking. Not blocking anything it's basically else. it's basically <laughs> the Tobey Maguire meme of like having glasses and it's like have after having sex with Rocky, like <laughs> <laughs> everything's coming uh, to focus now. Uh, but she, but like she, Talia Shire's gorgeous. She's like she's amazing. got her eyes and like the way she acts, like. So it's just that cliche of like, let's just take a really cute girl and let's just put dumb it's, glasses she's on all her. Better. Yeah, it, it's exactly. It what is it the is. cliche. It's it's the point of it's the point of uh, if so if Rocky's not persistent and he says okay, it's cool that you leave and everything, then she just walks away. Is that what happens? Yeah. Because she says I have to go, and so it's like okay, well, and she goes she up leaves. with Rocky. I mean. He goes in and is like, yeah, you can come on in. And then she goes up. I think his, with him being persistent, if you guys, <laughs> how do you guys feel about baby? It's cold outside then. <laughs> <laughs> you tell me. Hey, she had the choice. She, she could have left any time she wanted to. Hey, he, didn't, he didn't give her any alcohol. He didn't get. <laughs> Hey, took her skating, okay? That was her, her kryptonite. Skating. You owe me. You owe me for this $10 <laughs> skating session. I hate this. I hate this podcast so much. You all, if this is your first episode, just go back and listen to more. Go back. This is pretty much what it is. <laughs> I just think it's fun. It's like, like, it's a different time. He's courting her. You know what I mean? It's like, now there is an awkward moment of like when he is on that couch and he's just like, so why don't you come on over here? And there's beer yes, bottles. It's, and- a, it's a nice couch. I don't know. You know. <laughs> oh no, I uh, I had the phone pulled out because you know the people keep calling. Who wants to hassle? Oh, gotta go. It's like, well, I, I gotta go. Well, who you want to call? It's like, but I. I got, but my my brother gonna stay. <laughs> oh, I'll call your brother for you, yo, Paule. <laughs> I mean, oh, he does. Sisters with me. He does yell out the window. Maybe he knows that no one's like really around, and maybe he's the only one he's around. He's proving inside. that no one's around yeah. to so, hear you scream. So he's he has killed other people in this neighborhood, hundred percent. And then he's also probably plotting to kill the girl he walked home. Yep. Yep. To figure out her routines. Okay, so Tired. Rocky is a killer yep. and not a lovable, um, down a on his luck, 
uh, but a hero underneath all with a big heart. Got it. And you know okay. what? Paul is an accessory. Sure. Paul is an accessory. Paul is an accessory to killing his own sister. Yep. Got it. Love it. Noted. Before we move on to the next scene, though, I do <laughs> want to point out that I was watching, like, Rocky every once in a while will just kind of be walking. All of a sudden, you just go. Fuck yeah. And I was like, I was like, what does that remind me of? It reminds me of, like, TikTok teenagers. There's a, there's a teenager in my neighborhood that she's, like, 13 or whatever. She'll just be standing there, and all of a sudden, she'll just go. <laughs> and then she'll just go back to normal and I'm like oh my god it's like it's lit. that was like that's why they call it tiktok like now they have a tick it's like now they have a tick <laughs> and they've got to talk about it yeah. it's basically rocky rocky's like yeah we're just hanging out and i'm just like sorry i'm a boxer yeah. i'm a boxer i don't know uh, if you knew that yeah i'm just always trying to keep yeah, remember compulsively that. dance because of tiktok i'm oh, sorry trying to remember what mick told me about you know <laughs> 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 All right, scene four. Everyone is supportive of Rocky's quest, including Gaza, who gives him money for training expenses. Mick shows up and asks to be Rocky's manager. After a blow-up argument, Rocky accepts Mick's offer. Rocky begins his training, which includes running the streets of Philadelphia, working out at a gym with Mick, and punching meat at Pauly's meat locker. On Christmas Eve, Pauly causes a scene which causes Adrian to move in with Rocky. Do you buy okay. the Southpaw explanation? Of uh, uh, Rocky's why? description of Southpaw, I know that it was wrong ish. Like so, they got some 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 of it right. Yes, yeah, some of it. So I, I did. I wanted to look into it. I'm like, I don't buy anything Rocky says. Really, like you know, I don't know if he if yeah. he really knows. Things. Sometimes it seems like he's just saying shit just to charm or just to he's keep just talking shit up. Yeah, yeah. He's <laughs> trying to fill space because like Adrian doesn't want to talk to him. <laughs> That's basically what's happening. So they said that according to New Dickinson's Baseball Dictionary, the term was coined in the late 1800s to describe left-handed pitchers mm -hmm. okay. in baseball who, facing west in most ballparks, had their left arms hanging to the south side of the ballpark. Gotcha. So that, like, all most mm -hmm. ballparks were built facing the same direction, which meant left-handed arm is to the south. Uh, and then that term started to be applied to other sports, including boxing, and eventually became into general use. So, like, it's kind of right, but kind of not. South yeah. Philly, South Jersey, D yeah. South Camden, <laughs> yeah. South Paul. Huh? I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Paul's another name for him. Why don't you just? <laughs> in, case you didn't know, in case you didn't know. I'm just a lovable dumb dumb giant. <laughs> well, I have turtles. I, I have paws. <laughs> <laughs> I got my mitts on you. <laughs> you like animals, right? <laughs> yeah, you work at a pet store, right? Like, you know all about getting pawed, huh? <laughs> oh. But I did I did laugh my ass off. <laughs> <don't know> <laughs> I just learned that one way. No, <laughs> national I discovery. Never, I never knew what Pa meant, but I knew what South meant. I always thought I was talking about my dad, but I guess uh, <laughs> South Dad, you know, because he's gone. <laughs> he's done gone South. I haven't seen him in a long time. I did. Speaking of funny stuff, I did. I did find it very endearing the TV interview. Oh yeah, yeah. Like. Just the how excited Rocky was. He was just like, oh, I don't know. And then he goes, hey, can I say something? Can I shout out my oh, girlfriend? Yeah. Hey, yo, Adrian, it's me, Rocky. <laughs> yeah. Like, like we don't know it's you. And like, Adrian's just like, oh, why'd you do that? Why'd you do that? Stop that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's maybe one of my favorite scenes of the movie. Yeah. I don't know why. It's like because he's just so charming to be like, I'm on TV. Hey, in case you can't tell, it's me, Rocky. It's me, right? <laughs> <Adrian. laughs> I feel to hear your name on national television. Yeah. Nah, it, was, it was something else. Well, like, you want to do it? <laughs> we, we've mentioned that before. Like, it's like it was a big deal to like be in the paper. It was a big deal to <laughs> be on true. TV. Are you yeah. serious? Like, oh my gosh, yeah. I heard my name on the television. You're absolutely right. You know that what I mean? Huge deal. And so it is a massive deal, but then it like looking back though, like modern day, you're like, yeah, you Google yourself too. And <laughs> yeah. I see a couple things. We have a podcast <laughs> twice a week. No big deal. It's whatever. <laughs> so <laughs> but but I do like that Ugh. scene. It's very endearing. It, it their the relationship that they're developing is is very endearing. It's believable. It's too. very believable. Their chemistry is wonderful. And like like they said, uh this is one of those moments that like, what are you doing my uh what's the deal with you and my sister? You know? And he's like, 
What do you mean? It's like, you know, yeah, we've, we're having we're having a good time. What does that mean? It's like, you know, we, we fill gaps. And I was like, <laughs> nice, dude. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you do, bro. Get it. Thigh gap, bro. Thigh gaps, dog. Yeah. Woo. And then he's like, he's like, gaps, what's gaps? It's like, you can't ask me that, Paul. Like, but no, he's like, he's like, yeah, your sister's got gaps. I got gaps. It's like, oh, you know, you don't have much of a body, so you better learn to use your brain. And well, my dad said you don't have yep. much of a brain, so you better learn to yep. use your body. Yeah. It's like we complete each other, yep. you know, and you find this very endearing and very believable relationship between the two of them. It's very nice sentiment. And like even hearing that, I'm like, yeah, that is that is what yeah. you, me and my fiance have. You know, same, that is what, same for yeah. us, man. It's it's I love his. I love his oversimplification that somehow still seems spot on. Mm -hmm. We have gaps. She's got gaps. I got gaps. We fill each other's gaps. Yeah. You know, like a gap is a hole. A gap. <laughs> a gap is a space <laughs> that I have in my heart that she puts a finger in and fills it. Yeah. <laughs> Rocky. <laughs> I have to say it like that. <laughs> Put God. your fingers in my heart. <laughs> Let, let's move it on to this Mick okay. altercation. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is weird for me, right? Because I, I, again, I, I never knew this. I always just thought Mick was just that trainer that just helped rock out. And this is a weird, this is a weird moment of the movie because, like, Mick, man, like you don't like this guy. He's he's just coming around for the money right now, right? That's how like, you kind of feel. It, it has to, it has to be because again, this is like a poly. This is like it's like Gazo. You feel like it's going to turn on you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is everyone. This is everybody's got their down on the luck story, and they're all just trying to get in where they can. And and like Mickey, Mickey's not doing this because he wants to help Brock better. He's he's just like yeah, I just want to be a part of this. Yeah, this is my last shot. He he does. He literally says while he's even in the ring, he's like, "You're going to do this." You're gonna you're gonna beat Apollo because I've waited fifty years to do this for me, you, with you. Me or do this, you know. I've waited fifty years to get you ready, and I hated you last week, but Correct. now I love you. But exactly, and that by the way, that first altercation is even worse. Where he's like, "Hey, uh, guy, Nick guy came by and gave you this, gave me a card, and he said probably looking for uh." For uh, sparring partners for Apollo Creed, he's like, "Oh, great! Yeah, they probably look for sparring partners from Bukami." <laughs> I just said that, you dumb. <laughs> and it's like, it's like, you know, I've been coming in here for six years. That's when we get the background, yeah, right. And that's what I think is really important. And he's like, because you had the talent mm -hmm. to become a great fighter, and you threw it away by becoming a leg breaker for some no no name lousy loan shark, right? And and that's where they really butt heads. And then to see him come back up basically with his tail between his legs because Rocky got this, as he says it, freak luck opportunity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it is. He's It feels like he's out there for a handout. I think uh, I, I, I like Mickey in this, but I know that he ha is a lot more prominent in the sequels. Like He's, yeah. he's a lot more... Um, a, like a motivational towards Rocky. He's just kind of his coach in this movie. Manager. Yeah, Man manager. manager. Man I have no manager. manager. I do I do like his uh, Rocky's freak out as he's Dude. leaving and uh apparently that was improvised uh cuz he only had like 10 minutes to do it, so he did it all in one, <sighs> I believe. So good. And um like it was actually like a stinky place, so he was like I, everything that he was saying about the environment was true. Um, yeah. That's kind of cool. I do, and I do like that he did, got this all out because now he's actually. And then he kind of goes back to Mickey. He's now realizing that uh, he's got some bullshit, you know, and he's uh, kind of exercising that in in the t yeah. in, on, at this time, and getting over his own bullshit and like coming to an agreement with Mickey, being like, "You're right, I am being an idiot about this, so I need your help." He, there's a lot of this coming to terms with himself. That's very good. He even says it to Adrian. As he's walking out, he's like, "Hey, you know, I didn't say that. I said that stuff on the TV didn't bother me." Well, it kind of does. Yep. You know, he's trying to he's trying to come to terms with this, and then having that big freak out and telling Mick to basically fuck off. It's like I he's making a mistake by doing that. Yeah. You know, in the beginning, he wouldn't take any corner advice from somebody he's already got to pay out to. He would not take any advice, and if he does that again, it's gonna end too soon in this big fight mm -hmm. it's going to be one and done he's never going to do it again you know and what a beautiful shot too when he when, when he, he runs out when he walks down the road and and you don't you're not like 
you're not hearing what they're saying, but they they exchange words and then like shake hands. You get and it. the music you is telling you don't dun, have to know anything. Dun, yep. Dun, dun, dun. It's so good. Like <laughs> dun, we're building dun, up. Dun, dun, dun. It's a beautiful scene. I loved it seeing their origin story come together, and then now you've got some of the most famous like uh, uh, montage shots oh, of yeah. all time. Right. Like this is the first time we get the Rocky montage, which. Mm-hmm. Which moves forward, and I mean, like, first of all, that's not how you eat eggs. That's not <laughs> what how. What is he eat doing? Eggs. He definitely did that, didn't he? Yeah, oh, oh yeah, hundred percent. You know, he probably had I to do that like <laughs> several times. Oh, I hope not. Holy <laughs> shit! <sighs> he cracks six <laughs> eggs into six that glass. Six eggs, half a fucking. Du- that's half a dozen. Half a dozen. See, half a, do- a dozen's twelve, so half of that is six. Hey, yo, Adrian. That's how I know. You got, uh, you got any chicks down here? Because <laughs> I need some eggs. Uh, I don't know where I'm going with this. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I'm glad you tried. The pet store is uh. <laughs> And I was, I was thinking to myself, I'm like, you know, you know why he can't make that first jog, and he's so worn out getting up those steps, is because he's wearing fucking Chuck Taylors. Yeah. Chuck to Taylors. Can you imagine? Flattest, his knuckles are flat <clears throat> just to match his feet. Like, come on, dude. <laughs> He oh. has a terrible choice in footwear for like comfort. He's got those weird boots on at the beginning of the movie. And yeah. Now he's wearing Chuck Taylors running around. Yeah. I'd rather run in those Italian leathers, man. Like, <laughs> That's what geez, I'm, saying. I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you don't want to run around barefoot in Philadelphia, I don't think. So. Yeah. You got to find something. You got to find something. I, I love his sweatpants, though. Big fan of his uh, bell bottom sweatpants. I like his <laughs> outfit in general. Yeah. I didn't think I was going to like him in the, like, the hat and the leather coat. I liked it. Love it. I think he looks cool as yeah. shit. Mm-hmm. But Sean, that shot, I think the shot of the movie though is that shipyard oh, yeah. shot That's when cool. he's running. My and I heard on that to the same thing. I heard that that was all just like gorilla. Like they were just down there. They were just driving they were, by. They're just running around doing stuff and they'd be like, oh, get out and run right there. That ship was coming into dock right at the right time and they're driving by and he's he he's told taking, him to get out yeah. Yeah. of like, the car. Go, go run. I'm gonna film you. And, and he takes fast as you can. And he takes those long strides and then he just goes da 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 Fucking beautiful! It's this, like literally like him winding up, you know, like like uh, running that fast and winding up and getting to this, getting to like be conditioned to do this, you know. Yeah. It's a it's a good just like one shot metaphor for this whole yep. training sequence, you know. This is and this is more of what I what I love so much um, about this movie is those guerrilla tactics of filming these shots. They were they're actually driving by people like him running by. People didn't know that that was... They weren't extras. You can see people look at the camera. People are looking, stinging the camera left and right. And there's shots of him running past these people. And they're kind of like uh, interested in what's going on. And it played to the fact that this is Rocky now. And people around town should probably know about him. Yeah, you're right. That is actually perfect. But then at the same time, those people are just interested in like there's a guy being filmed. Yeah. Uh, is this in a movie. Uh, MTV Real World? What's going on here? And some guy, <laughs> some guy, a shot that stayed in the film is some guy was selling oranges and threw the threw him an orange. It's and he, awesome. And it, they left it in. He he grabbed it, waved back to him, and and they left that shot in completely unscripted. And that guy didn't even know it was going on. It's amazing. So great. It's one of those scenes where like it, it's kind of a happy accident, like yeah. the lettuce falling out of uh, in Breakfast Club, out and, of the sandwich, yeah. In Matrix, the little thing collapsing in the in the shootout thing, yeah. It's just like that. You got to keep it in, man. Like 100%. when shit like that happens, you got blessed. You yeah, know? absolutely. Well, should we move on to the final scene then? Let's do it. Well, scene five: the night of the fight comes along. Apollo puts on a show, assuming this is an exhibition. But when he's knocked down by Rocky in the first round, he begins to fight hard. The fight makes it all 15 rounds, and Apollo is named the winner on a split decision. He embraces Adrian, and they declare their love for each other. I thought there was a really interesting moment here. Right before they get to the fight, he does that thing where he wakes up and he goes down to the, the auditorium, mm-hmm. and he looks, and and he's looking at his, the photo of him, and he's like, oh, those are um, um, red with the white stripe instead of the yeah. white with the red stripe. I thought, in watching that, I was thinking, oh, like, he just wants this to be perfect because this is his only shot. Mm-hmm. And is how I was viewing that scene. But apparently, reading up on that, they said that that, that was a mistake by the props department. <laughs> yeah. Like they, they made the poster, but then the props department like brought him the wrong shorts. They also did that with the robe that didn't fit. Y- and okay. so again, to fucking Sly Stone and the writer's credit, they go, all right, uh, let's see. Okay, cool. We'll make Rocky go down there. 
and kind of be kind of worried about everything and he'll and they'll have this comment about ah, look at that so like they added that in there yeah then they added the oh, robe doesn't really fit you know like it's still too big like that that is just a testament to the writing of this we've said it the whole time that they just adapted as they went and these yeah i loved that scene that scene was never going to be in the movie but i love that anxiousness night before like uh, tomorrow's the day and yeah uh, those all those things it's just it's more creativity that has to come out because mistakes were made unfortunately and they didn't have the budget mm -hmm. it's not that they could redo this they didn't have the budget to redo a big old painting of rock one pair of shorts that's all we have they didn't have the budget to do another robe yeah right like i knew about the robe and everything and like uh, again it adds to his character that he's commenting on this it because does. he doesn't have this filter of like i should just let it go yeah it's it adds to his character whole heart and it is his character it is like his character. it's you know he's gonna beg you rocky really, who i assume someone like in the film making that is like rocky who like oh i got his pants wrong Whatever. who gives a shit yeah you know like it's like that yeah. and so that mistake that happened in real life so, like it's just this why like Movies like this, when shit like that happens and you're blessed with uh, like something falling and it being a beautiful shot, you mm -hmm. know, you got to keep it that way and you got to like kind of improvise on the spot like they did like this. And it yeah. just makes it better every yeah. single time. I totally agree with John G. Ellison on this. But also, wasn't Sly Stone just like didn't have a dollar to his <clears throat> name? He yeah. was going to. He was going to sell his dog or he sold his he, dog. I think he ended up having to do it because <clears throat> he couldn't feed him. Yeah. So, like, I don't think you can I don't think any other actor would have been able to portray this. No. Which is why I'm so glad that he was in this movie and he stuck to his guns because he's the only one that I believe in this role. This is yeah. a this is a movie about the kind of average guy coming up and doing something maybe even greater than him, you know. And if it would have been James Caan, it'd have been like James Caan doing that. Oh, James Caan. It wouldn't have been because people didn't know Sylvester Stallone. No. You know, they, right. it was just a normal guy they were watching back in 1976. So cool. That's another uh, another moment that almost didn't get shot. And S Sly Stallone said that no, this has to get shot. He's, they said, well, you better do it now, and you better do it quickly. And it was the moment when he comes back from visiting the mm -hmm. ring. Yep. And he says to Adrian, he's like, I don't think I can do it. And he voices his concerns and tells her that he's what he's scared of and says, no one's ever gone the distance with Creed. If I don't win, if nothing else, I just want to go the distance. That's all I care about. No one else has ever done that. Then I'll know I'm not another bum from this neighborhood. And that, he did that in one take. Mm -hmm. and got it. We got it. And it, he's like, it, no, it's so important because I like you have to know why he has to go this distance, why he, why, why it has to finish this way. You have mm -hmm. to understand. You this. have to understand where he's coming from, and it was yeah. great. So. Yeah, it's like even just like one shot, kind of just zooming in on him the whole time too. It's yeah. not easy to keep that, you know, straight. Some anything could have gone wrong. Absolutely, but it just it just worked, yep. and that's what happens. Like I keep saying with these movies, for some reason, shit just works out sometimes yep. <laughs> you know? it was meant exactly. to be yeah yeah, yeah 100 percent. so other than the opening scene we go an hour and 44 minutes without any boxing in a movie about boxing yeah which i think probably turns a lot of people off about this movie if they've seen any other rocky movies but we finally get to the boxing scene and i have one thing to point out i read this and i also cultivated this a little bit rocky gets in the ring he knocks down Apollo. Mm -hmm. Apollo's stunned. Apollo's hurt. He doesn't know what's going on. Rocky. <laughs> Rocky does not go to his neutral corner. That's right. Yeah. Takes about five to six seconds for Rocky to get to his neutral corner. And if you know rules about boxing, the, the fighter has to get to his neutral corner before they start the 10 count. It's not a 10 second count. It's just a 10 count, right? Mm -hmm. So I have a theory. I have a theory that... Uh, Mickey, legend, mm -hmm. been doing this for 70 years, probably knows the rules of boxing pretty well, right? Why yeah. didn't he yell at Rocky to get back in his neutral corner? I don't know. Why didn't he go, duh? You Rocky could have he been, been the champion. champion of the fucking world. It took him like six seconds to get back to his corner, and then it took like four, five more minutes, four seconds. And they got up to Apollo like an eight, 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 they got up. to an eight count. Yeah, he would have been champion. He would have been champion of the world. With, like, first round, first round knocked knockout. him on his ass. The Italian stallion. Never been knocked out before. He would have been champion. 
yep. world heavyweight champion. How does no one? How does Rocky not know this? How does Mick not know this? I have to pro- theorize that like Mick did not want Rocky to win this fight. Really? Yeah, that that Mick was maybe that Mick was in on this a little bit. It would have been too much for him. It would have been too much. Too He's quick. like, you can't, you cannot win this fight. Just prove your worth, and then let's work on this together. Hmm. Or maybe Mick was taking a cut under the table. Oh, uh-huh. go the know. distance, Rocky. Go the distance. Go the distance. Go the distance. I don't know. That was very interesting <sighs> to note that. Rocky, this this could, movie could have been over. Yeah, he is an experienced fighter. It's not that he's like a new guy who just happened to walk in. He's like, oh, oh I knocked him down. Oh, what do, what I, do I what do? do I do now? It's like, no, you go to a neutral corner. I understand though that you do have the excitement of you know ninety thousand people um, watching you Fight's and done. like everybody's <laughs> insane around you. I can't believe I did. And like, okay, <laughs> I, oh my god, did I just do this? It's like <laughs> it's a hell of a punch too. Yeah. It's like, uh, do you like the boxing action of this movie? I've I read a lot of things that people are like, nah, you know, it doesn't look it's not a real boxing f-. and I I know that. I know that probably in real boxing people actually try to protect their face, which Rocky I mean, doesn't do. There's some shots, you know, you can tell that uh, they're not even near their faces or anything. I do, it doesn't really bother me at all, man. And I like that there was, they had uh, like two boxing trainers like on set, like train, like chore- choreographing this entire thing for them, mm-hmm. and they walked off because of, of disagreement with John G. Alvinson, I think. Oh, weird. And so they had to do it themselves. And so once they walked off, um, Sylvester Stallone literally that night wrote like fifty pages oh. of them like choreographing Stallone this all out. Uses a right. Yes. Uh, Apollo Creed gets hit. Face it was more of like a, a, a choreographed dance and than it was Damn. anything else. Like he said, he yeah he like um, was uh, staging it all out and blocking it all out like he would a movie. Yeah, and just saying you go here, you go you throw here, and I'll duck here or whatever in one night. And, to, and then they did this. I liked it though. Like yeah. I know it wasn't real, but like yeah, I've other, watched real boxing, heavyweight boxing before. It's never this exciting. No, yeah. The, the other thing you got to understand is this is the only Rocky movie that doesn't utilize any slow motion oh, in the yeah. fight sequence. Every other Rocky movie does, and and it adds a lot of dr- yeah. drama and and you know dynamic value to this. But this movie doesn't do that ever at any point, and they do. They uh, Sylvester Stallone and uh, uh, Carl Weathers. I don't I spent how many hours like straight hours rehearsing this. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's insane. It's nuts. And like not even that. There's there's three other dudes in the or sorry, two, at least two, maybe even three with John G. Alvinson, but there's the ref and then you have Garrett Brown c- carrying the huge thing that no one's ever seen before, you know? <laughs> like what the hell is he even doing with that? Is that even going to work? <laughs> like he's just going around and like, you know, like he's got to choreograph him out. Yeah, right where now? are you going to be at when we make this exactly. move? Exactly. Damn. Yeah, that's yeah, like you're saying, shot blocking and whatnot, and just yeah. Oh man, I it, thought it, I thought it was fantastic, and I mean, it could have been like there just wasn't much. It was like, what do we see? Like the first round and the last round, basically, and then they're like, hey, fight's going on. Eh, Fifteen rounds, you know, like you don't see much. No, but it makes sense now that you're saying that because they're just. How are we going to choreograph this yeah. whole thing? Like we can't do this whole fight. Yeah, you know? and it FYI, takes forever. they definitely took blows during this exchange. That's what I'm saying. This whole thing, and I think they left with opposite. Yeah, that's what it's I like, it was like opposite injuries. Like Stallone's Stallone's ribs Ray were broken. actually broken. Oh, yeah, <laughs> and <laughs> Carl Weathers' Carl nose. Weather's nose was broken. Holy I think, shit, or like his eyes. Great. It was it was bad. Like they took <laughs> real blows. Damn. So I mean, and by the way, the makeup is. Pretty well done. It Wasn't is. that an Oscar? Is that what they won Oscar for? for no, like... it was editing, directing, and best picture. Okay, but well they're they probably should, they nominated. should have been nominated for that because I'm yeah I'm pretty sure I, I heard that their budget most of their budget went to make <laughs> that's it, right. right yeah like well, but insane. rightfully so because they had to they had to portray it in stages of like up oh, there's a couple hits okay here's more hits here's the final hit cut me like yeah they both look like shit at the end cut I mean me, like I me, I imagine. Me. Film, I, I didn't read any of this or anything, but I imagine they had to film in order because of that, because of yep. the low budget. Oh, 100%. They had to film, like, a, maybe they this took maybe one, two days. Oh, maybe more? Ma- maybe more. You know, like, I don't know, because, like, and I'm sure it's 12 straight hours of <sighs> just doing this, mm-hmm. you know? And then, like, putting makeup on gradually or, like, taking it off gradually, whatever. Yeah, like, whatever. Someone's got to be, a, like, a soaker of their sweat, you Yeah, know? spritzing constantly. Which I hear was not a thing. <laughs> it was just real. <laughs> Oh, they were really? just sweaty. 
in like in that gym. in that hot gym. Yeah, maybe that's why it's so believable. <clears throat> like I like it. Did you guys notice like the, some of the crowd shots? Uh-uh. Mm-hmm. So some of the crowd shots are like very generic style crowd shots. Like AI. Very, no, not <laughs> <laughs> not yet. Yeah. Chat GP. Uh, <laughs> no, like. Like you could tell, like they certainly don't match up to the other yep. shots because they had a tough time filling this arena. Oh my god! Hey, yeah, we need you here for seventeen hours today. For, for what? Well, this is, it's a movie. It's what movie is uh, it? Is you it you a big know. movie? Is no. it like big time movie? No, no. James Con? No. Am I getting paid? No. <laughs> who's in, who's in it? Like J- like James Con or no. like Susan Sarandon? Uh, like yeah. like a Burt Reynolds movie, right? No. It must be Burt Reynolds nope. or something. It's a guy named Sylvester Stallone. It's a weird fucking name. I, <laughs> I've never heard. Of, who is that guy? Don't worry about it. You want to come in or not? I, d- I can't. You know, AJ, I you want to go ice skating? And stuff? Yep, <laughs> yep, I do. At, but it's very funny. Like, you'll see these very almost kind of like uh, generic granular shots of like uh, of, of crowd interaction and whatnot in between shots of characters like Gazo and mm-hmm. Adrian and like all this stuff. And. Uh, it's pretty fun to yep. watch, and you'll see some empty seats out there, even <laughs> yeah. though it's supposed Whoops. to be a sold-out thing. <laughs> Whoops. There really wasn't that big of an auditorium no. for a world championship fight. <laughs> yeah. Not really. They didn't even really tell you where it is, right? It's not in Philadelphia. Or it is yeah, in it Philadelphia. Does. Yeah, it is. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's in Philadelphia. That's okay. good. That's good. Yeah, whatever. Crack the Liberty Bell. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear about the original ending of this No movie? Uh, they. Uh, the... It was originally supposed to be, I think... Um, well, what I think it was, well, what they shot, I think, was uh, something happened and uh, Rocky was disenchanted about the fight and did lose, uh, but also like went to the back and uh, like saw Adrian there and, and held her hand. And that's like the poster shot. Yeah. So yeah. that was like an edited out version uh. of it. And he's like, it's not, it's not triumphant enough. You know, it's not, there's something, it still it, needs, it to needs be. something else. So it was a reshoot. This whole thing of uh, Adrian Rocky, yeah. it was just, and they shot it. They didn't, they didn't shoot it in like the same location. They just shot it in like someone's garage. Right. They just had people in tight shots so they could mask it a little bit. Uh. So they reshot all this, and this is like the one of the most iconic endings of all time. Was yeah. just like we need a punch up. Like we need, we needed something a little bit, a little no bit better. Intended. Yeah, <laughs> it's it is one of the best endings of all time. It's so I feel it. It's hard not to. Yeah invest in this at all you know well it's one of the greatest endings of all time because he didn't win yeah mind-blowing he he, he didn't win you didn't win and but he went the distance and he did what he wanted to do and i think that's the ultimate winning story he's made a name for himself he now. made a name for himself he did what he set out to do and uh, you know in the end he's he feels good about how this went and yeah. it's really just about adrian and like yeah. how much he loves her because yeah. when she when he when she gets in the ring the first thing he says is like where's your hat yeah, exactly. You know, he's like, he just cares about her. He doesn't care yeah. about what he just did. Correct. You know? And then she says he, they love each other. It's really yeah. awesome. Yeah, man. <laughs> it is. It's a wonderful ending. Um, yeah. I don't know. Well, I think we've done it all. We've said it all. We reviewed this with a modern eye. It's time to give it a rating. AJ, this was your choice for Summer of 70s. What do you got for a modern day rating? I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you this right now. This is. Right now. I'm going to tell you. Let me tell you something. Um. <laughs> Rocky, Rocky, the entire series really um, is one that I revisit semi regularly um, when it's just been, especially when I'm in those like moments of like burnout that you're just like, I don't know what the hell to do. And you watch Rocky, you watch any of the series almost. And, uh, you know, it just kind of gives you a little bit more. It's it is it's a it's an inspiring story. Um it's an inspiring story that's not only written, but a story behind how it was made. And his st- Sylvester Stallone is Rocky. He just wasn't a boxer. Mm-hmm. He did. He sold his dog for 50 bucks. Um, and the first thing he did when he sold this script finally was went and bought his dog back. Um, which was Butkus. Which was Butkus mm-hmm. in the movie. Yep. And they had know, great chemistry. Oh, wonderful chemistry! <laughs> yes. Oh man, like probably probably better than Bill Paxton and Helen Hunt. One hundred percent. It was fun. It's cool too. One thing I could tell, but because when when he was in that cage in the in the pet shop, he was yeah. like, he's like, what the fuck, dude? Well, what are we I'm doing? never in a cage. What are we doing? <laughs> what here? are we doing here, man? You know, uh, to 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 this day, at least, like. I kept reading factoids about those turtles, and there's like a new factoid every single year that it says 
to this day, as in of 20, June 2020, as of 2020 <laughs> he still has those turtles. As of 2021, he still has Cuff and Link. Turtles live forever. <laughs> those turtles are still alive and well. Well, at least they were. Uh, you know, he he lived and breathed this script, this character, this story. The story is very, very well written. And when you find out all the things that potentially could have gone wrong, but they persevered through to make this movie and then give a real inspiration, not like not saying that this guy came from nothing, got the absolute luckiest shot in the world and worked hard enough to beat the world champion. It's that he went the distance and he proved it to himself that he could. That is an inspirational story. And it's not one that you can that that has been told a thousand times. It's one in a million, I think. So, um, that being said, uh, Rocky the original. Although I do not think it's probably the best Rocky movie of of in existence, I will say that I think it is certainly up there. I'm going to give Rocky a nine point five. Nice, Sean. What about you, man? <coughs> um. Yeah, I, I, it's hard not to, like I said, invest yourself in this movie and, and kind of uh, give yourself over to it. Um, the buildup of it is, is, is I like the fact that it is really not a boxing movie. It's a, like, just a drama of this up and coming guy and like his rags to riches kind of story. Um, I, I like the making of this, I think, more than I do the movie itself. I find it extremely inspirational. I, I, Miss John G. Avildsen movies uh, mm-hmm. horrendously, um, horrendously miss them. Uh, horrendously, I, uh, I, I do. I don't. I wouldn't find ever find myself really returning to this movie very often. Um, I think it's pr- one of the best movies of the seventies, and I, I respect it in that. I respect it more than I like it. Is really okay. what I want to say. Uh, I'm gonna give it a seven point nine. Six. Seven point nine six. Sean, we're pretty much spot on together. I'm gonna give it a seven point nine five. I think that funny enough looking at this, this probably would have been everyone's least favorite Rocky as a kid. Mm. But I also think it's maybe everybody's most favorite as an adult because it, it really portrays like real life. Rocky four is not real life. None mm. of these other Rockies are like it's just unbelievable. But this is like there's so much pain in this movie. No one is necessarily likable in this series, and or sorry, in this movie. There, there's like I said, there's no character arcs, but that's what I like about it because it's real life. Everyone is just doing what they got to do to survive. It, even the ending, sort of like, I think we did good, but like it doesn't matter, like yeah. whatever, you know, like it, it's it's real life, <laughs> and that's what I like about it. But there were some things they probably could have cut out, like I didn't like the the Marie scene and a. A lot of just like kind of shots that went on too long, but but I really do respect this movie. So yeah, I'm I'm a nine a seven point nine five. Executive producer David Gold says everyone loves a good underdog story, and Rocky may be the best of them all. Admittedly, Rocky for me was the movie that started the franchise, but Rocky three was my Rocky. But coming back to this movie gave me a newfound appreciation for the Italian stallion. This movie has heart, quips, and first date scenario that would never fly in our modern day storytelling. <laughs> Watching this film, I found a new sense of inspiration and determination that if given the chance to take that one shot, Rocky was more than an underdog. He was a champion that was overlooked. My modern day is 8.15. Guys, that takes us to an 8.39. That's going to slide in to the number 18 spot. That is just below True True Romance, just above Lethal Weapon. Okay. is where Rocky flies. Feels good. Wow. Feels okay. I'm okay yeah. with that. Yeah. It respect. deserves it deserves that respect. Like yes. it's got to get held up. There. Top twenty. That's good. Yeah. And just for reference, uh, this is also the highest rated on IMDb and uh, Rotten Tomatoes of all the Rockies. Oh, is, yeah, it is. is. The highest. It is. Yes, this yep. is the highest. Yep. So just got to throw that out there. We appreciate everybody being here. We always love having you. We're so glad you tuned in. Next week, summer of seventies continues. We got. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, yeah. which is a summer movie, <laughs> and that is followed by Duel. If you're new to the podcast, go back this time last year for another 70s movie, another summer movie, Jaws. Ooh. Come on now. That is a very, very good episode. You it guys is. should go listen to that it's one. It's very right. fun. Definitely. Guys, thank you guys so much for listening to this show. Thank you for watching it on YouTube, because I know you tuned into YouTube at least for a couple we minutes. We know you did. We know you did I that. I should see what they were doing. What that was kind of a funny part. YouTube? They were like laughing and did making they, noises. Somebody did something that I couldn't hear. So, I love uh, pantomime. There it is. And uh, 
<laughs> we appreciate you tuning in regardless. We also really appreciate it when you leave us a review. Just slap a five star on this while you're listening. We always get them little bit of trolls that are coming out, right, Mike? So. <sighs> Anytime the TikTok goes off, it's Troll yeah, that's City. That's right, Troll City. So we need your love and we need you to solidify that with five stars. Leave us a review too because we like to uh, we like to read them in our off time. And by all means, find us on social media at Confused Breakfast, just about anywhere on social media. Just search for Confused Breakfast. Confusedbreakfast.com. You can go there and get some merch. You can get some shirts. You can get some koozies. I think you could get some sunglasses. Probably some boxing gloves. Some boxing gloves. Uh, I think you can just get just straight hanging meat. Yeah. You can just buy your hanging meat from straight from our website. Printed meat. Go to our website also and see our ratings of all the movies we've ever done. See our individual ratings and our overall show rating. Love you. Goodbye. Deus. Please support our sponsors. Support us directly at patreon.com slash confused breakfast. We are produced by Upload Media Group in Cedar Rapids. We got Craig on the controls. Just can't wait to go home. <laughs> Adrian! Craig Rian! Craig Rian! <laughs> And you can learn more at uploadmediagroup.com. And we're also on the Cloud 10 iHeart Podcast Network. Learn more about that fantastic group of people at cloud10.fm. We're out. Deuces. Deuces. You can do it. You can do whatever you want. Just don't be creepy. Yep.